Hi, everyone. Hi, Miss Booksy. Ah, uh, oh, hi there. Kids, it's the Sea Witch. Don't worry, kids. I just have one request for Miss Booksy. Can you tell my story? That's a great idea. Let's read all the stories with our favorite villains. No offense. None taken. <laughs> Very little. See, there she is. Anyway, the Little Mermaid was not just a mermaid. She was also a princess, daughter of the mighty Sea King. And she had five older sisters, also princesses. One of the Little Mermaid's favorite things to do was listen to her sister's stories about the world beyond the water. See, whenever one of the princesses turned 18, she was allowed to go to the surface of the ocean. There, she could see the sky, and the birds, and the clouds. And if they were extra lucky, they might even see a ship with humans on board. Sometimes, though, the Little Mermaid got the sense that her sisters were just making stuff up. Human people have eight legs. They kind of look like octopuses. I think it's octopi. Whatever. And some humans have a horn on their head, like a narwhal. No way! You'll see. Land people have eyes all <laughs> over their bodies, so they can see everything at once. nuh -uh. Yeah, they do. Blah, I don't believe it. I think humans are beautiful. I guess they are, if you like lots of eyes and horns and stuff. When the Little Mermaid was almost 100% sure they were fibbing, she would go to her dad. Dad, is it true that human people have eight legs and a narwhal horn and lots of eyes and that they wrestle sharks and eat whale blubber for dessert? The only thing you should know about people is that they can be dangerous and you should never speak to one. Ugh, when am I going to get my chance to see the humans? I feel like I'll never turn 18. But of course she did grow up. See, there she is right before her 18th birthday. Hi, <laughs> let me tell you about life as a sea princess. We lived in a palace made of shells and pieces of treasure from sunken ships. At night, each princess slept in a bed of beautiful sea flowers. Shh. And you've heard of a school of fish, right? That's where we studied and learned. Actually, we did lots of things that human girls do, just a little differently. We played sports, We went to the movies. Shh. Only problem, popcorn gets soggy underwater. We acted in plays. To swim or not to swim? That is the question. You should have seen me in South Pacific. The Ocean Times said I was a star. Imagine, me a starfish. <laughs> so basically, I was just a regular girl. Oh, except my best friend was a dolphin. <laughs> Hi there. I guess you humans might not think that's too regular. Dolph and I would swim around and get into all kinds of adventures. <laughs> like one time, we swam way super deep, down into the part of the ocean that's so dark. You can't see your own tail. And then all of a sudden, we saw a glowing blob floating towards us. Ha! Ah, giant bioluminescent marine worm with fangs! Creepy! Bioluminescent means it glows. Yeah, obviously. Let's get out of here. And then another time, we hitched a ride with a shark! They can swim real fast! And they have big scary teeth! But they can't turn their heads, so they're like... Guys, what's back there? I don't know, man. I don't see nothing. The craziest adventure was when we sneaked into the sea witch's house. She lived in a giant sunken pirate ship. Super creepy, but also super cool. <laughs> the sea witch had gone out to get a carton of whale milk for her coffee. We swam inside and... Wow! Cool! <laughs> we were playing with a sword. Well, I was. <laughs> Dolph can't hold a sword. No hands! And I was just about to defeat the pretend pirate ghost that I was battling when... La 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 la! witch! Hide! No! Let's get out of here! Out of where? Ah! Care to tell me what you're doing in my house? Nothing! Yeah, we took a wrong turn. Yeah, I mean, we don't even like it here. I mean, <laughs> that's not what I mean. I mean, I'm, um, uh, see ya! Not so fast. Are you the daughter of the king? Um, yeah? 
I saw you on TV. You sang the Oceanic Anthem before the big squid dash in the orca race last year. Oh, down in the sea, by the prawns the light, or the sea sponge we. Oh, I just love your voice. Here, have some tea. Oh, why, thank you. Excuse me. <laughs> yes, a beautiful voice. You wouldn't want to trade it, would you? <laughs> My voice? Yes. I would give you something wonderful in return. Anything you wished. We should really get going. Yes, I hate to be rude, but no thanks. Okay, we are never going back there. Definitely not. See you tomorrow at my place? Not if I see you first. Fun fact, dolphins have very good eyesight. It's true. And really good hearing. Yup. And they're nosy, bottle nosy. Heard that too, and it wasn't very clever. Oh, well, I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> he has a bottle nose, get it? Anyway, you may be wondering what was happening the next day. Nothing major, just my 18th birthday. <laughs> we were having a huge party, and everyone was there. All my friends, and my sisters, and my mom and dad. <laughs> there was a pinata, tons of balloons, and a pin the tail on the tiger shark. Hey, cut that out. And of course, we had a huge cake. <laughs> no candles though, because you know, water. <laughs> but I still made a wish. I wish that when I swim to the top of the ocean and look out, that I'll see a real live human prince. A handsome one, not like what my crazy sisters keep telling me about. Like, I hope he only has two eyes. <laughs> like the handsome princes I've seen in my fairy tale books. I want to see him dance and ride a bike and play soccer. Oh, and I'd also like to dance and ride a bike and play soccer. That sounds cool. Hey, maybe I want to be a human, just for a little while. Ahem. <clears throat> oh. Sorry, and I'm done. What do you wish for? I can't tell you that, but I will tell you that first thing tomorrow morning, we're going to the top of the ocean. I do that every morning. It's how I breathe. Oh, <laughs> I always forget that you're an air breather. <laughs> hey, have you ever seen a person? Not up close. What do you want to see a human for? No reason. The Little Mermaid was so excited about her first trip to the surface of the ocean that she could barely sleep. She tossed and turned in her bed all night. Finally, she drifted off to sleep and dreamed of having human feet. Hello, fellow human people. Thank you for coming to my dance recital. <laughs> now watch me dance with my brand new feet. Yuck! But the prince was really handsome. <sighs> the next morning, the little mermaid and Dolph swam to the top of the ocean where the water meets the sky. The last one there is a rotten turtle egg. Look! A ship! The prince! It's him! The who? What? Let's go! When the little mermaid and Dolph got to the surface, they looked out and saw a magnificent ship, definitely fit for a prince. There's got to be a prince on that ship. I just know it. What prince? That prince. What a dream boat. It is a nice boat, I guess. No, he's the dream boat. <laughs> that means he's a total cutie pie. I don't like pie. Humans love pie. Gosh, you don't know anything about people, do you, Dolph? I know that that one is looking right at us. What? Ah! I can't let the prince see me like this. Like what? As a mermaid. But you are a mermaid. Yeah, and he's a human, Dolph. Never in any of the hundreds of fairy tales that I've read have I ever heard of a human falling in love with a mermaid. Love? Already? Sheesh. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm getting a little carried away, but he looks just like a storybook prince. Not at all like my sisters described. They said humans have horns and eight legs and a hundred eyes, but this human only has two perfectly perfect eyes. Maybe we should go home. I have a better idea. Let's go see what he's doing now. It's his birthday too? 
O-M-G, whiz. We are so meant to be. Look, he's about to blow out his candles. Real candles, Dolph. Oh, well, I wonder what his wish is gonna be. Maybe it's to meet a mermaid. <laughs> I wish that he would wish to meet a cool mermaid. Me, obviously. <laughs> and fall in love. And then, like magic, I turn into a human with feet. <laughs> we could go on long walks on the beach, or do a three-legged race, or get matching patties, go shoe shopping, and of course, dance. Mm, we would probably be the best dancers in the whole world. <laughs> Are you done? I'm getting hungry. We've been here forever. Hold your seahorses just a little longer. Dolph, they are dancing. <gasps> That's dancing? It looks like they got shocked by an electric eel. It's beautiful. <gasps> Look at all the colors. It's so pretty. <laughs> what is it? I think they're fireworks. I've, I've heard of them, but I never knew they were so cool. Look, that one looks like a smiley face. <laughs> cool. <laughs> the two watched until the fireworks were over and all the people had gone down into the boat's cabin. Okay, show's over. Let's go home. Wait, look. Starlight, star bright. First star I see tonight. I wish I may. I wish I might. Have the wish I wish tonight. Didn't he already make a wish on his birthday candles? Dolph, be quiet. I wish I didn't have to get married. At least, not to any of the princesses around here. I just want to meet someone who gets me. I get you! Someone who likes the things I like. Someone I can talk to. Someone down to earth who likes to take long walks and dance. I'm here! It's me! Be mine! Huh? <laughs> Whoa! I'll on it. We'll never be able to get him back on the ship. Let's carry him to shore. Got him. Who are you? I'm the one you wished for. Uh-oh, here comes a human. We have to go. But... No buts. Let's go. Goodbye, my prince. I'll come back for you. I promise. Sir, are you okay? Where is she? Where's my princess? You fell overboard. You must have hit your head. No, she was here. She saved me. Whatever you say, sir. Back at the sea palace, the little mermaid told her sisters all about her adventure with the prince. No way. I don't believe you. It's true, I saved him. Well, Dolph helped. <laughs> but he looked right into my eyes. And you know what? It's true love. I just know it. Give it up. You're a mermaid. He's a human. Um, never gonna happen. Yeah, go to sleep. That's a good idea, because then I can dream of my prince all night. And she did. The little mermaid dreamt of her prince, but something was off. Ah. Oh no, that's not right. Sea witch. No, I'm not a witch. 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 That's it. I'll go to the sea witch. She'll know how to give me human feet. And so the little mermaid went straight to the sea witch. Ah, the king's daughter. What do you want, sweetheart? Um, well, I wanted to ask you, um, about feet. You want to ask me about feet? Well, I guess what I really want is to be a human. Really? How interesting. Is it? You know, when you were here last, I offered you a trade. You can have anything you wish for, and I'll have your voice. Can't you do some witch magic? Like, how about I just pay you, and then you turn me into a human, and then you can work up some other spell for a nice voice. So, um, not that your voice isn't already nice. Oh, I love your voice. Yeah, sure. And why do you want to be a human so badly? Well, there's this prince, and I saved him from drowning. Well, Dolph did, but that's besides the point. I think I love him. Oh, the prince, not Dolph. Oh, I love the prince. I don't know, whatever. I mean, it's complicated. Okay, here's what I can do. I'll grant your wish. You'll be a human. Really? But you only have one month. If you can't make the prince fall in love with you in one month, then you'll return to the sea. Not as a mermaid, but as a sea urchin. A sea urchin? And everyone knows sea urchins are the worst. Yeah, they're awful. They hide in the sand and stick you with their stingers. Yeah, terrible. Oh, 
And I will be needing that voice of yours. But how will I talk to the prince? He needs to hear how funny and charming I am. <laughs> he needs to hear me sing. Oh, and hear my laugh. <laughs> and hear my dolphin impression. Hey, I'm Dolph. I'm over here. Little mermaid, let's swim. Oh. I guess that one's more of an inside joke, but the point is I need my voice. We can trade. Trade? Who are you? I'm the girl who saved you. Ah, Sea Witch. Uh, well, maybe it's more mysterious and enchanting with no voice at all. Very well. Let's review. you. You'll be a human, but if you can't make the prince fall in love with you, then you'll turn into a sea urchin, and I'll have your voice forever. Deal? Deal. Abracadabra. Pleasure doing business with you. What's that? I can't hear you. Oh, your feet? Just swim towards the land. When you emerge from the water, you will have your very own feet. Oh. The Little Mermaid swam towards the shore faster than she'd ever swum before. She was so excited. But then she started to think about everything that was at stake. What if she and the prince didn't get along? Oh no, she hadn't thought of that. What if the plan backfires and she gets turned into a sea urchin never to see Dolph and her family ever again? But the Little Mermaid soon forgot her worries because she had arrived at the beach. She had two fully functioning, not at all tentacly feet. Ow, 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 owie, ow, ow, ow. Ugh, ugh. Sea urchin, told you they were the worst. But at least I have my very own feet. <laughs> Let the dancing begin. Well, as soon as my foot stops stinging, darn urchins. Okay, first order of business, shoes. <laughs> I know all about shoes because of the fairy tales I've read. <laughs> Maybe I can get some glass slippers like Cinderella. <gasps> These are perfect. May I help you? Oh, I forgot about the whole no talking thing. Darn sea witch and her weird spells. Don't worry kids, I can still talk to you guys, but just no one in the story can hear me. You wanna buy these shoes? Those are a kid size six. Let's find something in your size. Ooh, these are much better. Wait, where are you going? You have to pay for those, you know, with money? Do you have money? Then I'm afraid you'll have to go. I'll buy them for her. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. What happened? Why don't you have any shoes? I think she's saying she fell off the boat. You poor thing. Can you not speak at all? You must have hit your head or something when you fell overboard. I'll take care of you. But Princess Lily, she looks like a common ragamuffin to me. You are very rude. And you are coming with me. You'll live in the palace until you're better. Um, awesome. <laughs> if she's the princess, then she must be related to the prince. Oh. Princess Lily was so nice. She took me to get new clothes. And then it was time to go to the palace. Oh man, was it nice. Don't get me wrong, I love the Sea Palace, but this place was amazing. For example, they had this thing called an elevator. It's like magic. <laughs> You're on one floor, and then you go in this little box, press a bunch of buttons, and they light up, and then, presto, you appear on another floor. <laughs> After I got tired riding the elevator, the princess and I chilled out by the pool, where I tried to impress her with my water skills. <laughs> Turns out it's a lot harder without a tail. Still, it was fun. Could it really be this easy? First day as a human, I'm already best buds with the princess. <laughs> and it was only getting better because it was almost dinner time and that meant I would meet the prince. I was so nervous. Surely the prince would recognize me and it would be love at first sight or second sight, whatever. <laughs> but when we went to dinner, it was like he'd never seen me before in his life. Bummer. The princess explained to everyone that she had found me wandering around the town with no shoes, hungry and lost after I'd fallen off a ship passing in the night. She was wrong, obviously, but works for me. <laughs> hey, I fell off a ship yesterday too. Small world. 
Yeah, he fell overboard at his birthday party. He thinks a mermaid saved him. <laughs> It's true. I can't remember her face, but I'm positive I saw her. Mermaids aren't real, Jeff. They're just pretend, Jeff. Where does your family live, dear? Mom, I told you, she can't talk. Can she write? Oh, I didn't think of that. Great idea. Uh-oh. What would I tell them? Obviously not the truth. They just said they don't believe in mermaids. I know. Well, what does it say? It's all just nonsensical gibberish, sir. She must have bumped her head and forgotten how to write. I'll call the doctor tomorrow. For now, dinner is served. Ah! I guess she doesn't like fish. She might just be full. She ate a lot of ice cream earlier. Dear Prince Jeff, you're right. Mermaids are real. I know because I am one, and I'm the one who saved you. You may be wondering, why does she have feet if she's a mermaid? Well, I went to the sea witch who cast a spell on me, giving me feet so I could meet you. And that's also why I can't talk. See, she made me trade my voice for the feet. I don't really know why. Witches' curses are usually pretty weird. Anyway, I like you. Do you like me? Circle one. Yes, no, or maybe. Yours truly. a message from the sea witch. Not a word. No cheating. That's all it said. But what could it mean? Oh no. Did it mean I couldn't write to the prince either? No fair. Ah, ah. This was going to be harder than I thought. The next day, the doctor came in to check on me. Uh-huh. Stick out your tongue and say, ah. Oh, right. So you can't say a word, huh? And you don't remember anything? This is clearly a case of head bump induced non rememberiness I recommend lots of rest and ice cream. And you'll stay with us until you're better. Your family must be worried sick. And they were worried. The Sea King and all the Little Mermaid sisters were looking all over for her. Hi, excuse me, your highness. I uh, might know where your daughter is, maybe. You do? Where? Well, she's been very interested in humans the last couple days. And? Um... Speak, Dolphin! Speak! I think maybe she found a way to go on land, your majesty, sir. But there's no way she could get onto land. Unless... La 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 Ziddy dee 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 doo doo ba 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 Yes, who is it? Uh-oh! Where's my daughter? Who? My daughter! Oh, right! Her! She's up there, with the humans. She thinks she's in love. <sighs> with a human? We made a deal and the spell's been cast. I can't interfere. Anyway, I'm busy recording my album. I'm calling it Witch's Brew. It's jazz. You have until tonight to bring her home or else. The Sea King was so angry that he threw the Sea Witch in jail. You're making a huge mistake. Then, he sent a message to his daughter. Huh? This time it was from my dad, not the stinky sea witch with another rule. My dearest daughter, you must come home at once. You do not know the dangers of humans. I've sent my finest trained seal to escort you home. Love, Dad. I missed my dad, but I couldn't leave yet. Things were going really well on land. Plus, there's the whole curse thing. I tried to show the seal that I was safe and he could let my family know that I was doing just fine. But I'm not sure he understood. So like I said, things were going really well with the prince and princess. They taught me all kinds of stuff about the human world. Of course, they thought they were just helping me remember. You know, because I fell off a ship and bumped my head. But the best thing I learned was how to dance. The royal ball is coming up and you have to go. It's so much fun! Oh, ignore him. He still misses his imaginary mermaid girlfriend. Hey Jeff, maybe you can invite the mermaid to the ball. <laughs> You're very good at line dancing. Save a dance for me at the ball? Awesome, he likes me. Well, he doesn't exactly know that it's me he likes, but we're gonna dance at the ball. That's something. 
Jeff, you know that Daddy is going to make you dance with Princess Esmeralda all night? That's who Jeff is supposed to marry. They've been promised to each other for years. Wait, what? But that's not how this is supposed to go! The sea witch had just crashed the party, and um, it was awkward. So, um, anyone know any good jokes? I know one. How did the sea urchin cross the road? Uh, how? It didn't. I don't get it. It's an inside joke. Time's almost up, by the way. Uh-oh, I had to get the prince to declare his love for me, and fast. If that didn't happen soon, then I'd be a sea urchin forever. What's the matter, dear? Cheer up, it's a party, right, Prince Jeff? Wait a second, your voice. You sound so familiar. Darling, don't you remember me? I rescued you. But you're not a mermaid. No, sweetie, I'm not, but... You fell in love with me, remember? I remember now. And you said we were to be married, remember that? That's right. Excellent. Let's all just forget about all that silly nonsense about mermaids and sea witches, okay? Okay. Great! All right, who's ready for a royal wedding? Cool. Sounds great. Mazel tov. Oh no! Everyone was hypnotized by the evil sea witch's spell. Well, everyone except for me, Dolph, and my dad. I guess the spell only worked on real humans. I don't even know how evil magic works! Okay, quick rundown on why this is very, very bad. If Prince Jeff marries her, then the mermaid turns into a voiceless sea urchin. And we turn into jellyfish, I think. All these curses and spells are starting to get confusing. Then the sea witch will take over the entire sea kingdom. And she'll be royalty here on land if she marries the prince. She could take over the whole world! We gotta stop this. Yeah! And now the part where we come up with a plan. Operation Defeat the Evil Sea Witch, part one. He may have had human legs, but my dad was still the almighty sea king. And that meant he could summon an army of the toughest sea creatures to help us. <gasps> Is this thing on? <gasps> well, what's up, your majesty? I need you to gather all your friends. It's time to battle. While the Sea King explained the situation to the shark, Dolph began his part of the plan. Which brings us to Operation Defeat the Evil Sea Witch Part 2. E -e 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 hey guys, Dolph, is that you? What happened to your tail? Uh, that's not important, but listen up. I need your help. Dolph explained everything to his dolphin brethren while I went to work on my part of the plan, stall for time. The sea witch had put everyone to work while she was just lounging around in a deck chair, sipping on a pineapple drink and barking orders. I don't want crab, I want lobster. You call these flowers, try again. More shiny thingies, more ruffly stuff, more everything. Jeez, what a bridezilla. We're almost finished with this dress. Oh no, we have to start all over. Oops. Wedding today, 3 p.m. <laughs> now to find Prince Jeff. I'm so excited to marry my true love. Poor guy, he doesn't know what he's saying. Hey, let me out. I have to get married to my lovely bride. Ugh. Okay, I hope Dolph and my dad are ready. What do you think you're doing, you urchin? I've decided I can't wait to marry the prince. He's just so dreamy. Out of my way, shrimp. She looks mad. My darling, let's go get married. Okay, my love. Things are getting a little too real. Where's Dolph? And my dad! E -e 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 -e. They're here! Whoa! Whoa! Let's go! Start the wedding! We're gathered today, whoa, to join this, whoa! Skip to the end! Do you? Wait, what's your name? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Keep going! Do you, whatever, it doesn't matter, keep going, take this man, Prince Jeff, to be? I do! Prince Jeff, do you? Whoa, 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 whoa! Don't worry, we got this! 
You. You're doing this. I was gonna play fair, but I changed my mind. You'll have to go through me first. No problem. Ah! Mmm, <laughs> tastes like chicken. Uh, what happened? The evil sea witch's spell is broken. Hey, that guy has a tail. Uh-oh. What's going on? Really long story. Hey, talking dolphin. Uh, I should go. And look, she's a mermaid. Uh, uh-oh. Wait a minute, it's you. It is. <laughs> you can talk. I can. <laughs> and you're a real mermaid. Yeah. Very cool. Jeff, are you okay? Absolutely. I told you mermaids were real. Six months later. So everything was working out great. The sea witch was defeated and her spells were broken. I didn't turn into a gross sea urchin and my dad and Dolph weren't turned into jellyfish. Yay! <laughs> Esmeralda admitted she didn't want to get married anyway. Convenient. <laughs> and Prince Jeff finally found his mermaid. Moi. <laughs> and best of all, after lots of begging and explaining, my dad and Prince Jeff's parents agreed that it would be okay if he and I went on a real date. So far, so good. And by the way, um, milkshakes are delicious. <laughs> hey, want to hear me sing? Of course. <laughs> Ahem, that's not my real name. That's just what my mean stepsisters and stepmother call me. <laughs> my real name is Ella. Actually, let's begin my story there. When I was Ella and everything was nice and peaceful and lovely. I was an only child, but I had a ton of pets. So when I was little, I was never, ever lonely. Two cats, Sir Bonkers and Lady Blinky, a dog named Patches, a hamster named Spinner, a tortoise named Fudge, a lizard named a lizard Biff, a pony named Pegasus, not a real Pegasus, but that would be really cool, <laughs> and a goldfish named Goldie. Okay, so Goldie wasn't such great company. Moving on. My dad was the greatest dad of all time, seriously. And he told the awesomest bedtime stories ever. And then the big bad wolf said, Little pig, little pig, let me in. And then the little pig squealed, Not by the hair of our chinny chin chins. See, he was really good at doing voices. So let's see, my pets were cool, my dad was the best. Oh, and our town was super neat too. We lived in the kingdom, excuse me, a queendom of Queen Elaine the First. She put on fabulous tea parties and concerts and musicals, like all the time. <laughs> so yeah, things were pretty great, but I must have been cursed by an evil witch or something because one day my dad told me that he was getting married. <gasps> okay. That's not the terrible part. It would have been awesome if you were marrying Queen Elaine or somebody cool like that, but no way. Somehow he found the meanest lady ever in the history of meanness. But it wasn't his fault, I guess, because at first she pretended to be so nice. Hello there, Ella. Do you like candy? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> hey! Too late. You snooze, you lose. And those were my two new stepsisters, Gritzel and Unga. They never even bothered pretending to be nice. Anyway, my dad was duped, and suddenly I had a new family. My stepsisters had a real su casa is mi casa kind of attitude. In other words, they took all my That's stuff. That's mine! I want it. Mine! Gimme! Okay, I'm all about sharing is caring, guys, but come on, you can't take all my clothes. Here, you can wear this. Then they said they were scared of all my animals, so scared that my dad had to banish them all to the barn outside. Even a lizard bit, she'll get cold. Too scary. But what about Goldie? Come on, all she does is sit there and go. Take her away! They all have to go! I'm sorry, guys. I'll visit you. The great animal exodus wasn't the end of it. Whenever my dad was away, the step monsters would treat me like a servant. I did the sweeping. I did the windows. <laughs> I did the vacuuming! 
and being big ol' meanies, Gritzel and Unga constantly made messes on purpose. Whoops! <laughs> I cleaned nonstop, day in and day out. <laughs> and I was a mess, always covered in dust and grime, which led to me getting a new nickname. Ew, Ella, you're all covered in cinders from the chimney. Maybe we should call you Cinder Ella. Cinder Ella. So yeah, this all lasted a few years. Then my dad left for this big fishing trip expedition thingy. That's when my stepmother decided I should move into the barn. It was cold and dark and a little scary, but I had my animals and that was nice. Aw, plus some field mice. Hi guys. <laughs> Anyway, my dad wouldn't be gone forever, right? He'd come back and see how mean my step family was and give him the boot, right? Do you guys remember now? That's right, it's Greetzel and Unga. Ugh, they are the worst. Let's watch the rest of the story now. Life in the barn wasn't so bad. Cinderella had made a nice little room for herself. <laughs> Being that much closer to the rooster meant I never overslept. And it sure was convenient being able to just roll over and start my chores. <laughs> but I missed my old life, especially my dad. It seems like he had been gone for his fishing trip like forever. <sighs> then I heard the awful news. Extra, extra, awful news. Local dad captured by pirates. Yep, my dad had been captured by a gang of pirates. And to make matters worse, my stepmother and stepsisters didn't even seem to care. He'll be fine. Who cares? I can't worry. It gives me wrinkles. Oh, they were the worst. Fine, I'll go find him. Don't be ridiculous. You have to stay here and take care of us. No way. I'm going to go find him and fight the pirates. I'll hire a search party. They'll find him and bring him home. Really? Really. But like, really, really? Really, really, really. Gosh. Can we stop talking about pirates and like get some breakfast? Yeah, really. Cinder, really. <laughs> oh, fine. With my dad gone so long, things went from very bad to way worse. My stepmother decided it was time for my stepsisters to get married. And of course, I had to help. There were etiquette lessons. The most difficult task was teaching them how to be not terrible. Would you like to go for a walk? You don't have a carriage. Ew, next. Okay, so maybe don't yell so much. Why? Never mind. It was beginning to feel pretty useless. My stepsisters were just big old meanies. Meanwhile, my dad was still out there somewhere with a crusty old gang of pirates. Actually, that doesn't sound so bad compared to these guys. Good thing I still have you guys. <laughs> Good night, Sir Bonkers, Lady Blinky, Patches, Spinner, Fudge, Elizabeth, Pegasus, Goldie. <laughs> Good night to you, Squeakers, Pip and Puff Puff. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Rooster. Shh. Save it for the morning. That night, I had a beautiful dream. My dad was home safe and sound. My stepmother and Gritzel and Unga were nowhere in sight. Amazing, I was all dressed up, no more rags, and I had the prettiest slippers. It was almost as if they were made of glass. Ah! <gasps> What's all that racket? Why didn't you wake me, Mr. Rooster? We must get to work immediately. This is so exciting. What's going on? The queen is having a ball and we're all invited. Whoa, I just had a dream that I was dressed up in a beautiful gown, <laughs> just like I was going to a royal ball. That's so funny. That is funny, you in a gown. Get it, because you wear rags. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Whatever, they're rude. I was used to it, but a royal ball? Now this is exciting. I have to make a dress and my hair. What am I gonna do with my hair? And I have to prepare some witty banter. I haven't been around people, well, people I actually wanna talk to in forever. <laughs> I hope people still like knock knock jokes. Those are my specialty. My stepmother had said I couldn't go to the ball. Well, I would just have to find a way, wouldn't I? <laughs> I began preparations in secret. My stepsisters went through dresses like they were going out of style, so I had lots of material to choose from to craft a perfect gown. <laughs> a little satin here, a little silk there, some velvet, pearls, and voila! <gasps> the most beautiful dress in the world. Oh, 
shoes wouldn't be so easy though. My stepsisters had thrown out all of my shoes back when they first moved in. None of these shoes fit. Anyway, one day I was cleaning the attic when I found a box that I had never noticed before. <gasps> shoes! These must have belonged to my mom! They were beautiful slippers that looked almost as if they were made of glass, just like in my dream. And next to the shoes was the most exquisite necklace I'd ever seen. Everything was coming together perfectly. But it's not like the royal ball was the only thing I was thinking about. Curiously, I hadn't heard anything about my dad. You know, the whole being captured by pirates thing. Supposedly my stepmother was on it, but I just wasn't sure I could trust her. So I decided to take matters into my own hands. Harvey Beeswax, private investigator, at your service. Hi, Mr. Beeswax. My dad was captured by a gang of pirates. I need your help. Pirates, eh? Yes, and my stepmother said that she can't find him, but she's done diddly squat. Diddly squat? That's not enough. I know, so do you think you can find him? It'll be tough, but I'm the best private eye in the city. If anybody can find your pop, it'll be me. Great. I charge three gold bits an hour, plus expenses. Oh, right, um, money. Yeah, I don't have any of that. Sorry, kid, no money, no detective. Wait, what if I paid you in jewels? Jewels? I like jewels. What do you got? So, I brought my mother's necklace to Harvey Beeswax, private eye. Oh well, at least I still had the dress and shoes. Or so I thought. When I got home, I found this. It's mine. No. Mine! Cinderella, who did you make this dress for? Me or Gritzel? Um... It's clearly for me. Blue makes you look like a blueberry. Well, blue makes you look like a... a blue whale. Cinderella, please settle this. I... I, I made it for myself, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Funny joke, right? <laughs> no. Not really. Gee, I can't decide who it would look prettier on. Me, obviously. Uh-uh, me. Oops, I didn't like it anyway. Okay, well, let's see. I had started the day with a lovely ball gown, a diamond necklace, and glass slippers. And suddenly I had no dress, no jewelry. Well, at least I still had the shoes. They didn't fit anyway. Well, back to square one. It's finally the day of the ball. And I had nothing to wear. <laughs> what do you think, Pegasus? Could this be shabby chic? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Too casual. Cinderella, come here. <laughs> Ugh, gotta get to work. Meanwhile, hmm, no sign of Cinderella's old man yet, but I'll solve this case. Getting Gritzel and Unga ready was no small task. They required bubble baths. Manicures, pedicures, blowouts. Finally, my stepsisters were ready for the royal ball. You guys look really nice. Um, we know. Okay, well, have a great time. <laughs> Unga, don't yell too much. And Gritzel, remember to say please and thank you. But don't forget to have some fun. That's quite enough talk, Cinderella. Goodbye. I'll be honest. I was kind of sad. I retreated to the bar with some snacks to eat my feelings. I know, it's pretty cliche, but I was sad, okay? And then, I don't know why, but I yelled out, oh, if I only had a fairy godmother. <laughs> Yoo-hoo. What? Hello. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me, frog on my throat. What's up? Did you find my dad? No, not yet. But don't give up, kid. I just came here to scrub for clues. Clues? Here? Yeah, you never know what you might find if you just look. You okay? Me? What? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely not crying or anything. Okay. Well, uh, see ya. He left, and I went back to feeling sorry for myself. Why? 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 Mr. Beeswax? Sorry I'm late, sugar, but better late than never, right? Who are you? Your fairy godmother. I thought that part was pretty obvious. Whoa, I thought that was just fairy tale stuff. Cool. 
A lot of people think that, but I'm real. Watch this. Awesome! I know, right? So how does this work? Do I get like three wishes or something? Three wishes? What do I look like, a genie in a bottle? Oh, so no wishes? Darling, I'm here to make all your wishes come true. But not all at once. It doesn't work that way. Oh. And some of the wishes will be wishes you didn't even know you wished yet. Say what now? I know what's in your heart, sugar. How? Honey, I'm your fairy godmother. It's fairy magic, you see? All right, so first things first, let's get you ready for the ball. The ball? Yes, I so want to go to the ball. I had a dress and a necklace and shoes, but my stepsisters, they tore everything up. Well, not the necklace. I gave that to Harvey Beeswax, private eye. Long story, but I really, 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 want really- want to go to the ball, yes, I know. And with a wave of my magic wand. Cinderella had just been explaining in detail the recent happenings that she had experienced to her fairy godmother. Yes, dear, I know. You want to go to the ball. So as I was saying, with a wave of my magic wand. Oh, yeah. Like, why wouldn't I want to go? Dancing, candy, disco balls, handsome princes, hopefully chocolate milk. I love chocolate milk. OK, hold the phone, honey. We can't have you going to the ball looking like this. Ah, uh, rude. Well, I just mean you, you look uh, like a mess. Yeah, yeah, I got it. You just don't look like a princess, that's all. Okay, listen, fairy GM, I think you need to quit while you're ahead and just help a sister out. Right, so what's your favorite color? Blue, uh, bluish aqua, turquoise, um, aquamarine, bright blue. Okay, all right, any shade of blue, I get it. With the wave of my magic wand. Yeah. And with all my magical powers combined. Yeah. I will give you the most beautiful, flowy, princessy, sparkly, on sale from Black Friday, huh? Ball gown. Yeah! <laughs> and what do you think, honey? I love it! Hey, what's this? Oh, nothing, dear. I'm so excited. The prince is deaf gonna want to juju on that beat with me at the ball. <laughs> Uh, you won't be dancing with those tootsies. Uh, yeah, I'm due for a mani-pedi soon. Well, stick your hands out and close your eyes, my little ragamuffin love. Boopy boopy blabbity boo! These are the bomb! Ooh, hopefully I won't break them. I'm kind of a klutz. Oh, they fit perfect! <laughs> okay, I better get on my way. Oh, wait. Pretty sure the castle is like 48 miles away. That would take approximately 864 minutes if I walk, if I hustle. Cinderella, get it together. I'm gonna hook you up. Now go get me a pumpkin, spaghetti squash, any gourd or root vegetable ought to do. Uh, no gourds to speak of, but how about this? My Halloween bucket. Well, let me just come get it. That'll do, I suppose. Cinderella put the bucket down, and with one more swirl of the magic wand, the bucket became a gorgeous, sparkling carriage. A carriage is kind of like a stroller, but for adults. <laughs> I am going to look so cool riding up in this thing. <laughs> You're going to look cool for sure, Cinderella, but you also need to act cool. You simply need to follow my four fabulous formulas for fetching friends at a farty. Excuse me, I mean party. Oh yeah, I could use all the help I can get. Step one. Always laugh at people's jokes, or tell your own. Oh, I've been told I have an amazing laugh. Wonderful, let's hear it. <laughs> All right, that's very distinctive. Uh, maybe just take it down a few notches. Okay, whatever. What's next? Step two, find common interests. Cheese puffs? Oh, those are my favorite snack. Snack, jinx, <laughs> same, I love those. See, we're so similar. <laughs> Okay, cheese puffs, got it. Okay, number three, be a dancing queen. Okay, this one is easy. I love dancing. Let me show you how it's done. You go, girl, do your thing. Whew, I was 
Watch the mover and shaker in my day. Okay, so number four, I'm getting antsy and ready to go. Oh, well, you better get a move on. Um, I'll text you the rest. Sounds great, fairy godmother. <laughs> I'm just gonna be myself and have a blast. Hey, uh, who's driving this thing? My stepmother wouldn't let me go for my driver's license test. I almost forgot. You, over there. And y'all, over here. Well, we're off. <laughs> Thanks so much for everything, fairy. <laughs> you're the bestest in all the land. Well, you're certainly welcome. This is gonna be the best night of my life. Oh no, I forgot to tell her about the midnight thing. What is wrong with you? You forgot to tell Cinderella about the midnight rule. What were you thinking? Yoo-hoo! Cinderella! The fairy godmother caught up to the carriage and shouted after Cinderella. But clearly Cinderella was having so much fun, she didn't even notice. Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. <laughs> ah! Oh! You! Uh, you scared me half to death. Cinderella, you can't go yet. Ah! Fairy! You gotta cut the cord and let me go. I'm a grown woman. No, I mean the spell. <laughs> Say what now? The spell at midnight. You have to be long gone from the royal ball by then. Uh, I have no intention of leaving when the party is still hopping. No, you absolutely must. No. You have to. No. You have to. Cinderella, listen to me. If you don't, then all this magic will wear off. There's always a catch. But don't worry about it. Go, enjoy yourself. Just keep track of the time. No problem. I'll set an alarm on my phone. So Cinderella continued on her journey to the castle, super excited and super nervous to meet the prince. You guys, this is gonna be the best night ever. At the ball, Cinderella's having the time of her life. Woohoo! When suddenly she noticed two very familiar but not so friendly faces, her stepsisters. Ah, uh, brother, or should I say a sister? <laughs> These two. But the stepsisters didn't even notice her because they were too busy trying to vie for the prince's attention. Oh, by the way, there's the prince. Ooh, Unga, that prince is gonna love my dress. He's totes gonna dance the night away with me. No way, Grits. I'm sure he'll notice my breathtaking eyes and ask me to marry him. Meanwhile, Cinderella was doing her own thing and having so much fun at the ball. Then I told him, that's not a squirrel, it's a hamburger. <laughs> Oh, Princey, you look hungry. Let me fetch you a treat. No, I will. Ugh. Cinderella was totally enjoying her night out and away from the barn that she kind of forgot there was a prince at all. Hey guys, who wants milkshakes? Cinderella, you are so much fun. Cinderella, guys, I don't want my stepsisters to overhear that I'm Cinderella. Please, um, please call me Sandy. Sandyrella, yep, that's me. <laughs> Why haven't we seen you around the kingdom before? Oh, uh, <laughs> you know, I've just been, um, you guys, oh no, I don't want the people to know I live in a barn and I'm basically a servant. Oh, what were fairies rules again? Oh yeah, common interests. Cheese puffs, don't you guys love cheese puffs? <laughs> oh, cheese cheesy, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. them yeah. so much, they're so good. <laughs> Ew, that was close. So Cinderella got back to the party, but she also started getting a bit sleepy. Woo! I am pooped, but I can't stop now. <laughs> Who knows when there'll be another royal ball. <laughs> I'm sure I still got time. But the whole evening, the prince had been noticing the mystery girl, Cinderella, or <clears throat> Sandyrella, <laughs> and how happy she looked, and how she was being nice to everyone, and ate tons of cake without a care in the world. Whoa, she is a seriously cool chica. <laughs> oh, 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 excuse me. Oh, I'm kind of a klutz. Oh, no, no, it was my mistake. Here, let me help you out. So, uh, this is some party. Oh, this old thing? Yeah, my mom goes kind of crazy. Yeah, my dad's kind of crazy, too. He was kidnapped by pirates. Yard. Pirates? Whoa. Yeah, pirates. Do you, you want to dance? dance? Yeah. Oh, oh wait, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh my oh, gosh. gosh. I like your crown. Thanks. I like your dress. Yeah. Blue's my favorite color. No way. Mine too. Ooh, common interest. Bonus. So next week, uh, we're having this mini golf tournament here at the palace. Do you think you want to come? That sounds awesome. 
Cinderella had wondered how she would sneak away from her stepmother and stepsisters and come back to hang out with the prince, but whatever, she would figure it out. So it's a date, uh, I, I mean. But Cinderella didn't hear the prince because the music had gotten louder and she was feeling the beat. So loud, in fact, that she didn't hear her alarm on her phone ringing. What's that noise? Huh? I said, what's that noise? Oh, it's just my phone. <laughs> oh no, my phone. I gotta go. Wait up, I didn't get your name. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Oh, oh no. Wait up. Oh no. <laughs> well, it was nice knowing you, beautiful glass slipper, but I gotta go. Wait, you left your shoe. Keep it. Huh? <sighs> At least the carriage is still... <sighs> Great. And so with one shoe, Cinderella walked all the way home, all 48 miles, which took exactly 864 minutes. She wasn't too sad though. I mean, guys, <laughs> the prince danced with me a ton, and I made so many friends, and I did a conga line, and the limbo, and the robot. <laughs> And I must have had like five pieces of cake. <laughs> it was the best night of my whole life. That happiness lasted all through the next morning, even though her stepsisters were being particularly annoying. The prince is going to ask me on a date. No way, he's gonna ask me. 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 Well, we'll see who he puts with at the Royal Mini Golf Tournament. The Royal Mini Golf Tournament, I almost forgot. And wait, Kreitzel and Unga got invited, oh boy. Mini golf tournament, huh? Don't worry about it, Cinderella. You're not allowed to go. Why not? Mom, tell Cinderella she can't go to the Royal Mini Golf Tournament. Cinderella, you most certainly cannot go to the Royal Mini Golf Tournament. Ugh, I hope that girl from last night doesn't go. She was the worst. What girl? This girl Sandy or something. She hugged the prince for like a whole hour. So annoying. Gee, <laughs> yeah, I hope she doesn't show up. Cinderella decided she'd better practice her golf swing before the big tournament. Oh, you better believe I'm going. <laughs> I don't know how, but I'm going. Fairy godmother better come through for a sister. I'm gonna need some new duds. <laughs> what do you think, Sir Bonkers? How's my swing? <gasps> <sighs> I guess I need to keep practicing. <laughs> Finally, the big day had arrived. Time to putt. <laughs> Cinderella waited for her fairy godmother to arrive. I wonder what kind of outfit I'm gonna get today. Oof, and I hope I get a new pair of shoes. I love these glass slippers, but I can't golf in just one shoe. I probably need sneakers anyway. Where is she? There she is. Ew. Mom says you have to go with us to the mini golf tournament. Yes! Okay, um, can I borrow a dress or something? I mean, I can't go looking like this. <laughs> you shouldn't go anywhere looking like that. But no, you can't borrow a dress. Unga, please. Cinderella, ugh, no one cares what you look like. We just need you to like hold our bags and get us drinks and stuff. Oh. So like, hurry up. Guys, the prince can't see me like this. All right, fairy godmother, <laughs> it'd be super great if you could show up about now. Uh, okay, fine, I'll just go to the prince's palace wearing rags. <laughs> no big deal or anything. <sighs> huh? There she is. The big day of the royal mini golf tournament had finally arrived and Cinderella was there. Awesome, right? Not so awesome. My fairy godmother didn't show up. And look at me, I'm wearing rags at the palace. You know where the prince lives? Ugh. Meanwhile, my stepsisters are playing miniature golf with said prince. Can my life get any worse? Heads up. Ow, oh, I guess it can. So yeah, Cinderella was pretty bummed. And so was the prince. He had really been looking forward to his mystery girl showing up. Why are you carrying around a shoe? Long story. And why do you keep gazing off into the distance? No reason. Hey, Prince, watch me putt. Huh? Oh yeah, that's great. I didn't even swing the club yet, ugh. Sorry, 
Hey, pretzel. It's Gritzel. Do you know the girl I was dancing with the other night? Nuh-uh. Do you know her? What girl? I didn't see a girl. I have to find her. I must see her again. Oops. Heads up. Hey, do I know you? Eek, the prince. What do I do? Play it cool, Cinderella. Play it cool. Uh, no, not me, mate. You must have me confused with someone else. Uh, right? <laughs> yeah. What? Okay, gotta go. That couldn't have been. Or could it? Great. Just great. I blew it. Uh, Cinderella had really, really, really wanted to talk to the prince, but she panicked. She was sure the prince would just see her in rags and reject her. I mean, princes like princesses, right? Right? So that settles it. I cannot let him know that this is the real me. Hey, Cinderella. Oh, what? Uh, who's that? <laughs> Cinder who? <laughs> oh, hey, Mr. Beeswax. You got news about my dad? We're getting real close to cracking the case, kid. I got one of my best guys following a pirate ship as we speak. That's great. Oh, what are you doing here? Official palace business. I can't discuss it. But between you and me, the prince has got a crush. Oh, yeah. I mean, sure. Whatever. That's cool. <laughs> Who is it? That's classified, kid. But get this. He doesn't know her name. Go on. Says she showed up at the ball and then she just ran off. Go figure. He thought she'd be here today. But when she didn't show, he called me. So, like, what did he say about this girl? I can't really discuss it because I'm a private eye, the keyword being private. But he says she's super cool. Yeah. And really funny. Yeah. And a fabulous dancer. She sounds great. <laughs> yeah, but she said she'd be here and she didn't show. Kind of rude if you ask me. Oh, I'm sure she has a really good reason. <laughs> we'll see. The prince is a good fella. Hate to see him get his heart broken. Well, gotta get back to work. She could be anywhere. She could be right under my nose. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> well, the good news is the prince obviously totally likes me. Woohoo! <laughs> the bad news is I have absolutely no idea what to do. Several days passed and Cinderella had not heard any news about the prince and his mystery girl. She tried to come up with a plan. Maybe I... No. Well, what if I... No, that won't work. Oh, I got it. I could... Uh, no. Cinderella, I need a pedicure. Right now? Yes, now. Me too! Haven't you heard? The prince is going around to every house in the queendom to find his dream girl. Say what now? He has the shoe, and supposedly he's going to marry whoever fits into it. So like, our feet need to look good. Yeah, we need prince-worthy tootsies. The prince is coming here? <laughs> yeah. And one of us is going to become a princess. Yeah. Me. No way. Me. 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 This me. is going to be interesting. Me. 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 Cinderella was so nervous. The prince was coming to her house. Oh, man. Fairy godmother, if there was ever a time when you need to help a sister out, it's now. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? She tried rubbing a lamp. What? It worked for Aladdin. She tried wishing on a falling star. No stars. Shoot. And finally, Cinderella tried to conjure her fairy godmother with a magical spell. Whippity, loppity, blob, blurpity, black, magicus, fairious, godmothereth, cometh now! If. She's here! Yay! Hello! Official royal business! Open up! Oh no! The prince is here! Let me try on that shoe. Me first! No, me! One at a time, ladies! One at a time! Hi, Princey. Remember me? Sure, yeah. Hi, Pretzel. It's Gritzel. Uh, looks like it doesn't fit. Sure it does. Perfect. I've never worn such a comfortably fitted shoe. And there are no other ladies in the house? No. Nada. No siree, Bob. Wait a second. Doesn't Cinderella live here? Cinder who? Never heard of her. There's another girl here? Please, fetch her at once. Your Highness, the other girl was not at the ball. I can promise you that. She lives in a barn. She's totally yuck. Nah, she's a lovely girl. I'll get it for you, Prince. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Mr. Beeswax. 
The prince wants you to try on a shoe. He's still after that mystery girl. Oh, I can't go out there. I know you weren't at the ball, but it'll just take a minute and it'll make the prince happy. No, like, I really can't go out there. I'm a mass beeswax. <gasps> what Unga said is true. I'm totally yuck. <laughs> what? You're a cutie. Come on. Okay. Now I really, really, really wish I had my fairy godmother. Uh, nothing? Come on! Hey, you look awfully familiar. Yeah? <laughs> I'm, um, uh, supposed to try on a shoe? Try not to stick it up. Well, what do you know? It fits! It's you! O-M-G! No way! Your Highness, I assure you, she was not at the ball! Well, actually, I was. <laughs> Super long story, but I really wanted to go, and you wouldn't let me. But then, my fairy godmother showed up, and oh yeah, apparently I have a fairy godmother. <laughs> anyway, she showed up, waved around her magic wand, and I got a dress, and shoes, these shoes! Well, the other one's in the barn, but anywho, then I went to the ball and I met the prince. No big deal. Fairy godmother? There's no such thing as a fairy godmother. Sorry I'm late, Cinderella, but your fairy godmother is at your service. <gasps> Where were you? I needed you. I'm so, so, so sorry, honey. I've been at a fairy magic conference and these trolls crashed the party and it was just a huge old mess. Anyway, what's up? Oh, that's the prince, over there. <gasps> oh, he's cute. Uh, yeah, yeah, look at me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm a mess, but they made me try on the shoe and of course it fit. <laughs> well, that sounds like a good thing. But now he knows I'm not a princess. This is terrible. <laughs> Cinderella, can you tell us what's going on, please? Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, well, um, this is my fairy godmother. Fairy godmother, this is everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. How you doing? Hello. And now, with a wave of my magic wand, I will transform Raggedy Ragamuffin Cinderella here into a beautiful princess. Finally. <laughs> Wait. Huh? You don't have to change a thing. Cinderella, I like you for you. You do? Ew. You don't need a fancy dress or shoes or... Um, hold up. Uh, that's really nice and everything, but if my fairy godmother wants to hook me up with some new duds, then I'm a letter. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Okay, fairy godmother, work your magic. Bloopity blabadoo. I'll grab the other shoe later. <laughs> now me. No, my turn. Sorry, girls. A fairy godmother can only have one fairy goddaughter. No, no fair. fair. They'll get over it. <laughs> so it was you the whole time, huh? Right under my nose. Oh, don't worry. You're still my favorite private investigator. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. With all the shoe trying on, hubbub, I forgot to tell you. We found your dad. You did? Yeah, my guy called me this morning. He's on the ship of Pirate Krusty Beard. Well, what are we standing around here for? Let's go rescue Cinderella's dad from the pirates. <laughs> Arrgh! What are you doing on my ship? We're here to save my dad, you crusty old pirate. Well, you don't have to be rude. Oh, sorry. <laughs> my girl. Dad! Who are you guys? Harvey Beeswax, private eye. I'm her fairy godmother. I'm the prince, and may I just say, I like your daughter, sir. Long story. <laughs> no time for stories. It's time for you to walk the plank. Ah, pirates! I almost forgot. <laughs> Allow me. Zippity zamaboo, ta ta, and bye bye. Yay! Okay, let's pause for a second because you're probably thinking this day couldn't get any better, right? I mean, the prince found me, my fairy godmother finally showed up and gave me some new princessy clothes, and now my dad had been rescued from the pirates. Talk about a good day. <laughs> but then it got even better. Get this, when we got home, Beeswax put my evil stepmother in the slammer. Turns out, she hired the pirates to take my dad. So evil, right? Anyway, it was pretty much everybody lived happily ever after fairy tale kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, and we decided to let my stepsisters stick around, but they were a lot nicer now that I was a close personal friend of the prince. <laughs> they even started doing their share of the chores. Hi kids, Snow White here, you know, from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. As you know, my story has lots of magic potions and spells. Some of them I don't like, 
For example, the one that turns me into stone. <laughs> but I was a big fan of the one that brought me back to life. Anyways, let's do a countdown of my favorite spells featuring my special guest. Wait, what's your name? Schlartzblugel. Really? Your parents named you Schlartzblugel? Well, it was either that or John. You can just call me the Witch of Grim Forest. Deal. So we're doing a countdown of my top favorite spells. You ready? A Schlartzblugel is always ready. Okay, coming in at number three in my top three fave spells, drum roll, <laughs> levitation. AKA floating, definitely a good pick. Haha, <laughs> look at her go! Awesome! Yeah! Whoa! 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 Okay, you can let me down now! Ouchie! Oops! <gasps> Sorry! Moving on, favorite spell numero dos invisibility. Here we go! Add one eye of Newt, two shakes of a lamb's tail, and the hair of a kimono dragon. I think it's Komodo. Komodo, Komodo, potato, potato. Anyway, mix that all up, and invisibility, illity, boo. Um, you were supposed to make me invisible? Ow, ooh, watch it. Ow, you stepped on my toe. Oh, well, I didn't see you there. Okay, so that one needs some work. Ready for number three? Yep. And finally, my number one favorite spell of all time, this one. donkey list ronky list do Hee-haw. <laughs> the one that turns the evil queen into a donkey. Figures, that's the one that works. <laughs> Yay. And those are my top three favorite spells of all time. Hee-haw. <laughs> Fun! Tell me which spell you like the best in the comments. And now let's watch Snow White's Adventures from Chapter 1 all the way to Chapter 10. <laughs> My real name is Margaret Katrine Simone Anna von Kluster Stadenstank. Yeah, so most people just called her Snow White. And pretty much everyone agreed that Snow White was the coolest girl around. She was funny. And then I said, that's not a yo-yo, it's a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> She was smart, A-N-I-S-M. And that's how you spell anti-disestablishmentarianism. And best of all, she was kind to every creature on earth. She was even kind to her stepmother, Katrine Francesca Karina Amelia Anastasia von Kleschberg-Dottenstonk. But you can call her the evil queen for sure. As you might guess, the evil queen was not nice at all. It's like she only cares about herself. Yes, that was the problem. The queen did not care for anyone other than herself, and she cared for herself way too much. She even traveled all the way to Grim Forest, where the witches live, just to buy a magic mirror that would tell her how great she was. This one is real nice. It'll tell you how wonderful you are. Error, error. Oh! Never mind, that one's no good. Okay, now this magic mirror is top of the line. You're gonna love it. Honestly, I'm getting some mean vibes from you. Ugh, next. Uh, okay, uh, this one. This is a great magic mirror. Go ahead, ask it. Excuse me, Mr. Mirror. No, 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 no. You gotta say mirror, mirror on the wall. It likes that. All right. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the most amazing person of all? You are my queen. You are the most amazing person of all. You're the best. Aha, I'll take it. Oh man, Snow White's stepmother loved that mirror. She would ask it like a dozen times a day if she was still the most amazing person in all the land. Will you pass the gravy, please? Hold on, hold on. Mirror, mirror on the wall. It's your turn. Yes, yes, one moment. Mirror, mirror on the wall. This again. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who I'm is the I'm trying to sleep. So yeah, the mirror was pretty annoying. The queen loved giving Snow White chores, as evil queens tend to do. So one day she was cleaning the evil queen's bedroom. She was just about finished when she noticed some schmutz on the magic mirror. I'm definitely not allowed to touch the mirror, but she did say the room had better be spotless. I'd hate to make her mad. Snow White reached out to dust the mirror and... <gasps> it's you! What? You are the most amazing person in the land! 
Why, thank you, but don't say that. The queen will get, like, really mad. Ugh, she is so mean. But I can see that you have a good heart. <laughs> Are you actually just an x-ray machine? <laughs> no, I mean you have a good soul. The queen has a rotten soul, by the way. Well, thanks for the compliment, but you really must keep telling her that she's the best. It's dangerous to make her mad. Promise? Okay. Long story short, the mirror did not keep his promise for long. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the most amazing person of all? You, my lady, are an amazing person. Of all? Yeah, sure. Of all. Say it then. Say the whole thing. Uh, I meant to say that you, my queen, are the most amazing person of all? Good, just checking. Uh... What was that? Nothing, nothing, nothing. It sounded like something. It's just that Snow White may be more amazing. But the queen didn't scream or break things, and she didn't cry. She was just very quiet. That's not good, kids. When the evil queen gets quiet, it means she's really, 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 really mad. And like Snow White said, that can be very dangerous. <laughs> yep, she looks pretty mad. I will get rid of Snow White. That sounds bad. Poor Snow White, she didn't do anything. Yeah, I was just minding my own business. The evil queen tried all kinds of different ways to get rid of the princess. She locked me out. Oh, she tried to mail me to Alaska. She even tried to send me away in a hot air balloon. You might be wondering why my dad didn't step in and do anything. Well, he was away on King Business at the semi-annual Royal Symposium. That's where natural-born kings and queens go to learn royal stuff, like how to balance giant crowns on their heads and how to wave at a parade. So I was on my own. The queen was getting frustrated. She couldn't get rid of Snow White. She finally decided to go back to the witches of the Grim Forest. Surely they could get the job done. Oh, it's you again. Welcome back. I need a curse to get rid of a princess. Oh, goody. I just love those curses. What do you need? A hundred years sleep? Make her lose her singing voice? Ooh, maybe we turn her into a frog. I just want her to go away forever. Ooh, I see. A one-way ticket. Exactly. Well, my sister is a travel agent. We can send her to China. I was thinking something a little more permanent. Okay, okay. Well, how about a classic de-atomizer? What is that? I don't know, but it sounds cool, right? Can't you just do something, I don't know, witchy? Oh, sure. That's easy. Here's what you need. A bubbling cauldron, a rose, Ow! watch out for the thorns, the tooth of a shark, eee! a rotten egg, gross, a picture of Santa Claus, um, random, and a lock of Snow White's hair. And check. Mix it all together and say these words. Mecca like a ding dong, cherry chicken ping pong, Snow White, why don't you just disappear already? Mecca lecka ding dong, cherry chicken ping pong. Snow White, why don't you just disappear already? And just like that, Snow White disappeared. Didn't think it would work, did you? Yeah, neither did I. But here's the thing, boys and girls. People don't really disappear. They just appear somewhere else. And that's what happened to Snow White. She appeared in another fairy tale. Whoa, where am I? This isn't our kingdom. Hey, I think that's Cinderella. How'd I get into her storyline? Oh, maybe her fairy godmother can help me get home. Did somebody say fairy godmother? I did. Do you want to go to the ball too? I can let you go. But you can't win the heart of the prince. I already promised that to my goddaughter, Cinderella. That's okay, I don't need a prince. I just want to go home. Oh, gotcha. And with a wave of her wand, Cinderella's fairy godmother sent Snow White back home. Whoa! And at the very same moment, the evil queen was asking the magic mirror if she was the most amazing person in all the land. Uh, no, it's still Snow White? What? I got rid of her! It should be me! This is awkward. Oh, I'll get her. And this time, I'll make sure she never comes back. I've got a wicked good plan. <laughs> I think you have something in your teeth. Oh, be quiet. 
The evil queen had just discovered that Snow White was back, and she was not happy. For revenge, she gave Snow White an endless list of chores to do. I had to clip her toenails. Ugh. I had to brush her cat's teeth. And as always, I had to clean her room, which she had left super messy on purpose. I mean, really, who leaves a half a meatloaf under the bed? Gross. Hey there, how's it going? Oh, you scared me. Sorry, I hope the queen's not being too mean. She's a real piece of work. Yeah, you think deep down maybe she's actually nice? Uh, I don't think so, she's pretty bad. I bet she was a really nice kid. And then something terrible happened, like a wizard cast a spell on her that made her bad. Not exactly. Or maybe she was attacked by a two-headed fire-breathing dragon and she just hasn't been the same since. Or, or, or maybe she was tricked by a boy who said he was a charming prince, but then he turned out to be a scaly lizard. And ever since then, she's just too sad to be nice. Um, nope, I don't think so. Surely she hasn't always been evil. I'm an all-knowing mirror. Trust me, she's been bad since day one. She drew angry, frowny faces on all her sister's dolls. She cut her brother's hair, and not in a good way. She scribbled all over her family photos. She even put mustard in her mom's shampoo bottle. Yes, indeed. She is one bad apple. Well, if she's always been bad, then how come my dad wanted to marry her? She tricked him. Before your soon-to-be stepmother moved to town, she paid a little visit to the witches in the Grim Forest. Welcome to ye old witchcraft and novelty shop. What can I do for ya? I want to be queen. Hmm, I don't have any crowns, but I could sell you this t-shirt that says, I'm the queen, gotta love me. <gasps> That's it! I need to make the king fall in love with me. I need a potion, a love potion. Ooh, good idea. The witch sold her a magic love potion that would make a guy fall totally head over heels in love with her. Whoa, I'm totally head over heels in love with you. Will you marry me? Unfortunately, that was my dad. And that's how she became the queen, and worst of all, my stepmother. Even back then, she didn't like me. Ugh, seriously, who doesn't like babies? Hey, do you think the spell could be broken? That would take some very serious magic. Even the witches of the Grim Forest have trouble reversing spells. Wait, she's coming. How do you know? How many times do I have to tell you? I'm an all-knowing mirror. I know everything. Did I hear you talking to someone? Yeah, um, I, 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 I talk to myself when I'm cleaning. <laughs> really? What about? Well, I was just talking to myself about the weather. Yeah, beautiful day, isn't it? Oh, I, I guess so. Now get back to work. That was close. Yeah, if she catches me talking to you, she'll lose it. <gasps> Uh-oh. What? Uh-oh is right, kids. The evil queen was listening at the door. Total fake out. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Tomorrow I'm sending you to the Grim Forest to return this defective mirror. I'm sure you'll both have a lovely time. Wake up! What time is it? It's time to go to the Grim Forest. <laughs> Here's the mirror. What happened to it? It's all smashed! See? I told you it was defective. See ya! She'll find her way into the forest, but she'll never find her way out. <laughs> okay, this is only extremely very scary. No big deal. I wish the queen hadn't busted the mirror. He would be good company about now. Ugh, in these directions. Walk backwards down the dragon's path? Make a left at the gargoyles. A backwards left or a frontwards left? It's that way. Thanks. Then turn around three times at the troll's bridge. <gasps> hey there, my sweet. I'm not your sweet, you troll. Sorry, I don't get out much. Then hop on one foot. Why? 
hop on one foot past the Wicked War's warehouse. And so the wishes shop should be? Yoo-hoo, right here. You looking for me? Yeah. How'd you know? Oh, just witch's intuition. That means I'm a really good guesser. Come inside. So, my stepmom wants to return this mirror. Oh, this mirror is very smart. Top of the line. Or at least it was. Yeah, I think the queen had a temper tantrum. <laughs> I remember her. Ugh, she's a doozy. Tell me about it. <laughs> this mirror was perfect for her. He knows when to tell a little white lie. Oh, like telling her she's the most amazing in the land? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a fib if I ever heard one. Hey, I think we could just fix the mirror? I was starting to like him, and I have a feeling I'm gonna need his all-knowing powers. <laughs> all-knowing is good. We'll just put a new face on him, new frame, and boom! Looks brand new. Awesome! Need anything else? Snake tooth? Lucky pigtail? Lotto tickets? Actually, can you reverse a love spell? No way, I don't mess with love spells anymore. Legal reasons. Snow White said goodbye to the witch and began her journey out of the Grim Forest. Why, hello there. Hi. <laughs> Maybe the Grim Forest isn't so bad. Okay, so to get back, I just have to reverse the directions. Hey, where's the Wicked Wart's warehouse? Or the Troll Bridge? It's getting dark and I'm lost. Wait. I know, the mirror will know how to get out. Um, hello, Mr. Mirror? Where's the on switch? Snow White tried everything she could think of to get the mirror to work. She tried voice command. Mirror, activate. She tried shaking it. She tried smacking it. Finally, she tried yelling at no one in particular. Why? Um, excuse me, ma'am. Sorry, didn't mean to frighten you. Are you okay? I'm lost, and it's dark, and this mirror is supposed to know everything, and it won't turn on. And I'm hungry, and I'm scared, and... Who are you? I'm the professor. You must be smart. Do you know the way out of this forest? I need to get back to my kingdom. Yep, follow me. Okay. The professor led Snow White out of the Grim Forest, past the Wicked Ward's warehouse, the Troll Bridge, the Gargoyles, the Dragon's Path, all the way to where Snow White had began. Thank you so much, Professor. <laughs> You're welcome. I hope to see you again one day. I don't know if I'll be going back into the Grim Forest anytime soon, but <laughs> if I do, I'll look for you. They said their goodbyes, and Snow White went inside the palace to give her stepmother the mirror. You're back? I mean, um, you're, you're back. How lovely. And I brought you a new mirror. <laughs> I don't know how to turn it on, though. It needs batteries. Duh. Oh. <laughs> well, good night. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most amazing person of all? You better say me. It's you, my queen. Hmm, you sound the same as my old mirror, the one I destroyed. All magic mirrors have this voice now. It's factory issue. Don't worry, my queen. That old mirror is history. Did you just wink? Uh, no, just something in my eye. The queen was not happy with Snow White's return. Hi, I'm Snow White, and I'm so cool. Blech. It's time to get rid of her once and for all. Uh-oh. What did you say? I said uh-oh because, um, I haven't told you how awesome you look today, have I? Silly me. You look good, girlfriend. Oh, thank you. There you go, Mr. Squirrel. Keep the cast on for six weeks. And don't get it wet. <laughs> He's totally going to get it wet. Hey there, Snow White. Let's pause for a second. That was Chef Huntsman. A lot of people just called him the Huntsman because he was actually the official hunter for the king. Okay, let's continue with the story. Hi, Chef. How's it going? Oh, you know, just hanging out. Cool. Sorry, let's pause again. Snow White had a little bit of a crush on the Huntsman. What? He's really nice, and he taught me all kinds of wilderness survival skills. He taught me how to call a turkey. Hello, can I please speak to Mr. Turkey? No, like this. And how to make s'mores. 
Are they done yet? Are they done yet? Are they done yet? He even taught me what to do if I encountered an angry fire-breathing dragon. <gasps> Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? It's you, it's you all. Anyway, what I mean is he's just cool, <laughs> whatever. So, how's it going? Oh, wait, I already asked you that, didn't I? Yoo-hoo, huntsman boy, I need to speak to you. Okay, your highness, be right there. No, now, I mean, please. <laughs> You better go. She's been super testy lately. Okay. See you later. See ya. <laughs> Huntsman boy, I need you to do a job for me. Sure, your highness. I need you to take Snow White out. On a date? A date? With her? Ugh, you have no taste. No, I need you to take Snow White deep into the forest and sell her to the wizard. I don't get it. There's nothing to get. You take her into the woods, you sell her to the weird wizard who will turn her into a frog or something, and then you bring me the money. Why do you want the wizard to turn her into a frog? I don't care if it's a frog or a rock or a bobblehead toy. I just want her gone. I don't think I can do this. It's not nice. Ugh. If you don't do it, I will. And trust me, that's much worse for pretty little Snow White. Why? She's so sweet. That's exactly why. Now run along. You have work to do. This is bad. I mean, you look red. The huntsman was very upset. He went down to sit by the koi pond. That's where he liked to do his serious thinking. I really like Snow White. I couldn't do anything to hurt her. What am I supposed to do? Meanwhile, Snow White went upstairs to do her chores and talked to her friend, the mirror. Hey, how are ya? The queen is making the huntsman take you out. On a date? No, out in the forest where he's gonna sell you to the wizard. The wizard? He turns people into frogs. Wait, Chef Huntsman would never do that to me. The queen said, if he doesn't, she'll do worse. I think you should run away from the kingdom. This is my home. I'm the princess. It's not safe for you here. You'll find happiness in the forest. Trust me. Snow White knew the mirror wouldn't lie to her, so she went to her room to pack all her prized possessions. Why won't you fit? <sighs> <sighs> You're probably better off here anyway, Teddy. I'll miss you. And I'll miss you too, Lamb. And I'll miss you, dollhouse, with a real elevator and a tiny ice cream machine. And you, my beautiful dresses. I'm going to miss being a princess, but I will be brave. And I will go out into the forest and I will survive. One day, I will return. Not as a princess, but as a queen. Snap girl, that was fierce. And so Snow White set off to find the huntsman and begin their journey. She was ready for her new adventure. Snow White and the Huntsman set off for their journey into the Grim Forest. It was a little awkward for a few reasons. One, she totally knew he was supposed to sell her to the wizard. Two, he didn't know that she knew that he was supposed to sell her to the wizard. And he was nervous. And three, they were always a little awkward around each other anyway because that's just how it is sometimes. When you kind of like somebody and you hope they like you back. So, uh, the sky is blue. Uh, uh I mean, a uh, nice day, right? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect day for a stroll. Yeah, just a nice stroll through a spooky forest. Look, I know the queen told you to get rid of me. You do? I won't sell you to the wizard, I promise. Psh, like I was gonna let you. What are we gonna do? I packed some basic survival items. Jerky, trail mix, water, jelly beans, first aid kit. Oh, and I packed a teeny tiny teddy bear. <laughs> I couldn't get the big one to fit in my bag. I can't just leave you out here. I'll be okay. You taught me all kinds of survival skills. Why don't I stay here with you? Are you nuts? If you stay, then the queen will come looking for both of us. Yeah, that would be bad. I'll be all right. The queen's magic mirror told me so. Come visit me sometime? Of course. Here, take my camping toolkit. It's got all kinds of handy stuff, even fingernail clippers. Oh yeah, I guess there's no place for a mani-pedi out here. Whatever, I'll be fine. I better go, don't wanna make the queen mad. See ya, Snow White. See ya, Shep Huntsman. And that's how Snow White began her first day as a non-princess, stranded in the woods with a small teddy bear and a pair of fingernail clippers. Well, 
I better start setting up camp. As Snow White began to work on her new dwelling, the huntsman practiced his spiel for the queen. It had to be perfect. Why, yes, your highness. I definitely sold Snow White to the wizard. He said he'd turn her into a frog in no time. Yes, ma'am. I sold her for... Oh, no! If I sold the princess, then I should have money. I don't have any money. The huntsman checked his pockets for loose change. Nope. He looked in his sock. Nada. He checked his fanny pack where he kept important things like his Phillips head screwdriver and chewing gum. Zip. Zilch. Zero. Wait, I know. To the koi pond. That's where I toss in my coins and make wishes. I wish I could get a puppy. I wish I could fly. I wish I could grow a mustache. I wish I had a hundred wishes. There must be like a million dollars in there by now. Hey, I never did get that puppy or that mustache. That's it. I'm taking my wishes back. Meanwhile, in Grim Forest, Snow White had just finished setting up her new, um, apartment? Perfect. It's shabby chic. <laughs> oh man. Okay, third time's a charm. Excuse me, Snow White? Professor, boy am I glad to see you. What are you doing here? I live here now. <laughs> We're neighbors. Great, there goes the neighborhood. Who's your friend? That's Sassy McSassy Pants. That's your name? I love it. <laughs> My real name is Sasper. It's short for exasperation. No, it isn't. Snow White, you can't live out here like this. Oh, sure I can. I'm not a princess anymore. I'm just a regular girl. Regular girls don't live under a pile of sticks in Grim Forest. Come on, you're moving in with us. No. Hush, Sasper. Oh, I shouldn't intrude. No, she shouldn't. Nonsense. Let's go. Snow White grabbed her bag and followed the professor and Sasper to their little cottage in the woods. She was so excited. I've never had roommates before. <laughs> this is going to be so much fun. Back at the kingdom, the huntsman had just gathered enough coins and was off to see the queen. Your majesty. Why are you all wet? Uh, it's raining. Uh, in the woods. It was raining in the woods. Anyway, here's your money. You sold Snow White to the wizard? Yup. He said he was definitely going to turn her into a frog. A frog? Are you sure? Yes, ma'am. You'll never see Snow White again. Well, you might see her as a frog, but it would be hard to tell it's her. Unless maybe she's wearing little yellow frog pants or something. How cute! Now please leave. Okay, your highness. See you later. Now, Muir, tell me, who is the most awesome and wonderful and dazzling person in all the land? Why, it's you, my queen. Obviously. Who else would it be? Snow White? Please, give me a break. As if. Psst. Okay, that's enough. Don't overdo it. That night, everyone went to bed feeling pretty happy. The huntsman was glad he didn't have to sell Snow White to the bad wizard. The queen felt confident that she was the best thing since sliced bread. And Snow White was excited to start this new chapter in her life with her new cool roommates. I'm going to need a bigger bed. Good morning. Good morning. How long have you guys been there? Not long. You drool when you sleep. We're just so excited. We've never had a princess for a roommate, or any roommate at all, except for all of us, of course. And we used to have a dog. Does that count? I think so. Do you want breakfast? Snacky made pancakes. They're shaped like animals. They're the best. You're so perky for so early in the morning. <laughs> What's your name? Kitty. Cute. You fell asleep as soon as you walked in the door yesterday. They didn't get a chance to introduce themselves. I was pooped. <laughs> Leaving your kingdom and roughing it in the woods is exhausting. <laughs> okay, let's do names. Of course I know you, Professor. <laughs> and now you know me and Sassy. I'm Snacky. He's the one who makes the pancakes. I'm the one who makes everything around here. Any favorite foods? Yes, I like corn on the cob and white cheddar cheese puffs and snow cones and club sandwiches. Oh, hold the mayo though. <laughs> Got it. I'm sloppy. I see. <laughs> I'm clumsy. That's just my nickname, though. I'm actually quite graceful. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I'm okay. Is that everyone? Don't forget me. I'm Tiny. Hi. <laughs> well, I'm pleased to meet all of you. So, what do you guys do for fun around here? We work. What? Work's no fun. Unless you get to work at an amusement park. <laughs> That's probably fun. We work in the mines. 
Oh, diamond mines? No, salt. Oh, and you have fun doing that? Sure, everything's fun when you're with your best pals. What do you do for fun? I dance and sing and go to parties and play with all my animal friends and read and get in snowball fights and fly kites and ride bikes and, well, yeah, just to name a few. <laughs> but I'll totally go to work in the mines with you guys. I'm no freeloader. You're much too big to go into the mines. Well, I'll work here then. <laughs> I can clean. I used to clean my stepmother's room all the time. We're not very messy. <laughs> Right. I'm also pretty good at sewing. <gasps> I can make you guys matching outfits. That no would be thanks. amazing. Well, then let me at least make some new curtains. There's a lot of bad feng shui around here. Finally, it was settled that Snow White would spruce up the cottage in exchange for free room and board. She did other little things too, like cut their hair and make a new chef's hat for Snacky. Oh, and she changed all the light bulbs, which was a huge help. Snow White kept so busy that she didn't even have time to miss home. Actually, speaking of home, the evil queen was having a ball without Snow White around. She brought the mirror with her everywhere and showed everyone how it would say that she was the most awesome person in all the land. Ask the mirror if you're the most awesome person. Okay, okay, I'll ask. Mirror, mirror, in my hand, who's the most awesome person in the land? Is it this guy? No. Is it her? It's you, queen. You are so awesome. Pretty rude, though, if you ask me. Hear that? I'm the most awesome person in the land. Three cheers for me. Oh, yay. Let's have a party in my honor. And I'll save my first dance for you, Mr. Huntsman. I, uh, actually can't. I'm busy. Busy? Too busy to attend a party of the queen. What are you doing that's so important? I, uh, have to wash my hair. Yeah, that's it. Okay, bye. The queen knew he was telling her a lie, but she didn't know why. She watched the huntsman from her window as he walked out of the palace and straight toward... Grim Forest? Suspicious. I'll have to follow him and find out what he's up to. Dun, dun, dun! What was that? Nothing. The queen followed the huntsman into the woods. Who's there? What was that? Is someone there? Finally, they stopped. Hey there. Snow White! The queen watched as Snow White and the huntsman talked and laughed. That rotten huntsman was supposed to get rid of her! He was supposed to take her to the wicked wizard and have her turned into a frog! How hard is that? Well, thanks for stopping by. Sure thing. Need anything special for next time? Yes. Snacky asked if you could bring him some marshmallows and graham crackers. We're going to make s'mores. Awesome. Will do. Bye, Snow White. Bye, Chef. And please be careful. If the queen finds out, she'll be very angry and we're done for. Yes, that would be bad, wouldn't it, princess? The queen rushed over to the witch's shop and barged right in. Hey, ever hear a knocking? This is an emergency! I need something! Something evil! Yeah, all right. The next day, Snow White had just finished her chores when a little old woman popped out of nowhere and said, you my lady! I'm but a poor peddler woman selling shoes door to door! Shoes? Oh, I don't have much money. They're on sale! They're so pretty and just your size! You deserve a treat! Well, I guess I could just take a look. Try them on! These are beautiful! I don't think I can afford them. No, they're free! <laughs> free? Why? Snow White started to go after the old woman to insist on paying her, only to realize... I'm stuck! What? No! No! I'm turning to stone! Why? Help! 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 Oh no! Snow White had become a statue from head to toe! She didn't even know what you and I know! That the old woman had really been... The Evil Queen! Goodbye forever, Snow White! <laughs> the Queen went back to her kingdom, happy to be rid of Snow White. 
She marched straight towards the magic mirror. Question, why did you say I was the most awesome person in all the land when we both know you favor Snow White? But Snow White is gone, my queen. She is now. But since you're such a wise, all-knowing mirror, you must have known she's been in the grim forest all this time. Oh, see? When you said in all the land, I thought you meant around here, like in this kingdom. I didn't know you were counting grim forest. My bad. Well, it doesn't matter. She's gone forever this time, and you better watch your back. Ooh. The evil queen was also quite angry with the huntsman. She put him in jail and threw away the key. Wait, I didn't have dinner yet. Oh man. Meanwhile, back at Grim Forest, the dwarves were just coming back from work. What's that? Looks like a statue. It looks like Snow White. Cool. I want a statue that looks like me. Snow White, Snow White, come out here. There's a statue and it looks just like you. Wait, I think this is Snow White. It must be an evil curse from that evil queen. She's so evil. The dwarves were so upset, they didn't know how to reverse a curse, and they didn't know whether Snow White could think or feel in there, or if she truly was made of stone. What if she's scared? What if she gets cold? We have to move her inside. The dwarves tried with all their might, but they couldn't move Snow White. Professor, do you know any ways to reverse a spell? Well, let's see. Maybe she could kiss a frog. Here! <laughs> Why do you have a frog in your pocket? Why not? It's cute! Okay, let's reverse this spell. Alakazam, Abracadabra, Kalamazoo! Bless you! It's no use! We don't know magic! We could go to a witch. But the witches live in the scary part of the forest! We'll just have to be brave! Yes! We have to save our friend! The professor and Giddy set off to find a witch to reverse the spell, while the rest of the gang stood watch to guard and protect Snow White. Ah! Shoo! Go away! What if we can't reverse the spell and Snow White is a statue forever? Don't worry, Tiny. We'll have a happy ending. I just know it! Professor and Giddy were on their way to find a way to save their friend Snow White, bravely trekking through the grim forest. Ah! 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 Okay, well, at least they were trying to be brave. But hey, at least they were willing to face their fears and help a friend, right? The two finally found what they were looking for. Ye old magic shop! Hello! Hi! Ding, 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 ding! Ah! I mean, hello! I'm Giddy! Good for you! And I'm the professor! We need to reverse an evil spell! What kind of spell? Our friend was turned to stone! That worked? Wow! Uh, alright, I mean, uh, let's see what I have in the antidote department. That means stuff that undoes bad stuff. But you're a professor, so you probably already knew that. Yes, I did. I didn't. I love learning new words. Ah, here we are. Now we just toss it in the cauldron. And... While Giddy, Professor, and the Witch mixed up the antidote, or stuff that undoes bad stuff, the evil queen was back at her castle thinking, which is never a good thing. Snow White's turned to stone, but why don't I feel any better? I should be glowing, relaxed, happy. Mirror, do I look happy to you? Uh, you look, yeah. Look at that smile. No, this is no good. How do I know some dingbat isn't gonna stumble along and reverse the spell? I'm sure it's fine. Nope, I'm going back to take the statue. The evil queen strikes again. Wake up, guys! It's time to save Snow White! We have the antsy goat! That means stuff that undoes bad stuff! Right, Professor? Something like that, but yes! Guys, we can reverse the spell! Wait! Where's Snow White? Snow White! Snow White, where are you? Guys, she's a statue. She can't answer you. Oh, right! Statues can't talk! I got it! Snow White, blink twice if you can hear us! Gee, great plan. Well, if you had been guarding her, she wouldn't be lost. Me? I wasn't the only one. What about you? Oh, pretty please stop fighting. I don't like it. Giddy's right. We have to work together. It's no use. She's either been stolen. Statue net. Or maybe she came back to life and she left. No, she wouldn't just leave like that. I bet the evil queen took her. Of course. Well, we have to go find her. I love it! Okay, team name. How about the seven cool dudes? 
Blech. I'll consider that a yes. It was official. The seven cool dudes were on their way to save Snow White. Well, there's the castle. Now what? We storm the gates and find Snow White. Wait, there's Snow White now. I have the witch's antidote. We'll just go up and turn her back to her old self. Hey, Professor, over here. Hey, it's the Huntsman. Why are you in jail? The queen locked me up for trying to help Snow White. I don't know what you're planning to do, but be careful. Uh-oh, we came to help Snow White. Huh? I thought Snow White was with you guys. She's here? Um... Oh, that's just a statue. The queen put it there to torment me. Actually, we think that's the real Snow White. No! We're not sure, but we think so. But we have a potion from a witch that could change your back. Well, what are you standing here talking to me for? Go save Snow White. But the huntsman said that just a wee bit too loudly, and yep, you guessed it. Suddenly, there was the evil queen standing right between the dwarves and Snow White. Save Snow White? Never! We will save her! Aw, you seem so upset. How sad would you be if I smashed that statue into a thousand pieces? No! no! Watch me! Okay, guys, it's time to fight back. But I'm a leopard, not a fighter! Today, we're all fighters. Now let's get that evil queen. The dwarves grabbed the queen's legs and stopped her in her tracks. Get off me! Get off! Not until Snow White lives and you're gone forever! The queen tried to move forward, but it was no use. But then she spotted the witch's spell-reversing potion in the professor's hand. Give me that! No way! Got it! <laughs> now get off me! Then the professor had an idea. You want us to let go of you? Yes! Let go! Okay! Let go, guys! But she has the spell reversing antidote! But luck would have it that the evil queen dropped the antidote and it fell right smack dab on Snow White's head! It doesn't work! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> What's everybody crying about? And why are all these pigeons on me? Shoot, birds, shoot! Snow White, you're alive! Of course I'm alive, why wouldn't I be? But wait, why am I back at the castle? And Shep, why are you in jail? The evil queen put me here. No, where is she? Over there! Owie. I'm confused. It's a long story. I'll tell it, I love long stories. I'm all ears, but first we gotta do two things. Let's bust Shep out of jail and put that bad apple in his place. Yeah! No! Sorry, majority rules, evil queen drools. <laughs> Not wrong! Once the evil queen was locked away in jail, Shep, the dwarves, and Snow White all kicked back and relaxed, happy as could be. Wait, no, there was one thing missing. Snow White, my darling daughter. Dad! That's right. Remember back in chapter two when I told you that Snow White's dad was away at the semi-annual royal symposium? You know, the place where kings and queens go to learn royal stuff? Well, he was back. Dad, I missed you. Where's the queen? Long story. Oh, yippee! Let me tell it. I love long stories. Now, how's that for a happy ending? <laughs> Once upon a time, in an enchanted land far, far away, there lived a king and a queen. One day, after many, many years of hoping for a baby, the king and queen had a little baby girl, a princess named Briar Rose. Everyone in the land was so excited about the new baby princess, especially the fairies. You see, fairies love babies. So the fairies all got together to plan a party to celebrate little Briar Rose. Fairies also love parties. <laughs> Ooh, I love the streamers, Twinkles. Thanks, boss. And Sparkle, those cupcakes look scrumptious. Buttercup, how is the music coming? Great, I've almost got the speakers set up. Speakers work. Excellent. Everything was shaping up for a wonderful party. Well, all except for one teeny tiny detail that everyone overlooked. No one had invited Grimsley. Grimsley was not like the other fairies. The other fairies liked to flit and flutter about, singing sweet songs and sprinkling pixie glitter on everything. And Grimsley, well, Grimsley liked to do sort of mischievous things like gluing fairies' wings together. We're stuck! And filling the pixie glitter jars with dirt. And she absolutely loved to put curses on the other fairies. Curse you! 
I'd turn you into a frog! Hey! Grimsley just wasn't very nice. Maybe that's why it never occurred to any of the other fairies to invite her. Anyway, the party started out like any other fairy party. It was lots of fun and everyone was happy until... What? I just came to bring a present for the baby. Oh, how lovely. Thank you. The king and queen opened Grimsley's present, but they were confused. What is this? A spindle? Briar Rose is far too young to play with a spindle. See kids, a spindle is a sharp, pointy thing used to make yarn. So not exactly a good gift for a baby. But then Grimsley said, You didn't read the card. It explains the curse. This is gibberish. It says here that when Briar Rose turns 16, she'll prick her finger on a spindle and fall into a hundred years sleep. The only thing that will wake her is true love. And good luck with that. Hard to find love when you're nothing. What did she say? She just put a curse on Briar Rose. A purse? A curse. Oh no, curses are bad. That's right, kids. Curses are bad, especially when they're from an angry fairy. Grimsley flew away, but the damage was done. Everyone was majorly bummed out. The next day, the king and queen banned Grimsley from the kingdom and ordered that all spindles be thrown away. This is a no spindle zone, no spindles. And it remained a no spindle zone for exactly 16 years. And then one day, a nearly grown up Briar Rose went exploring around the castle. <laughs> What you doing? I'm spinning. <laughs> really? This is how I spin. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Makes me dizzy though. <laughs> I'm spinning yarn. Then I'll make you a pretty dress. Oh, that's so nice of you. Hey, I've never seen you around here before. Are you new? I've been around for years, but no one visits me much. Oh, well, now that I know you're here, I'll come and visit you every day. <laughs> hey, could I try? Ooh, I poked myself. Ugh, it's not too bad, though. It only hurts a little bit. Too bad. She was actually kind of sweet. Oh, well. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Briar Rose had fallen into a deep sleep. Oh, no. Just like the curse said she would. When she didn't show up for dinner, the king and queen began to worry. Everyone went looking for her. Briar Rose! Briar Rose, where are you? When they found her sleeping, the spindle beside her, they all knew that Grimsley was to blame. The king and queen were so upset, but Grand Fairy, the oldest and wisest of all the fairies, had an idea. I can cast a spell that will make everyone in the castle fall asleep and only wake when the princess wakes. Then it will be as if no time has passed at all. The king and queen agreed to it. Grand Fairy summoned all the magic she could, and with a wave of her fairy wand, everyone fell asleep. Yep, still sleeping. And they slept and slept and slept. Nothing could wake them up. Over the years, the trees grew around the castle like a jungle, and eventually people kind of just forgot that it had ever even existed. But inside the castle, Briar Rose looked exactly as she did the day she fell asleep. Luckily, Grimsley hadn't cursed her dreams, and Briar Rose had plenty of sweet dreams. One time, she dreamed she lived in a land of puppies. Just puppies everywhere for as far as the eye could see. Puppies! <laughs> and then another time, the puppies were replaced by kittens. <gasps> kittens! <laughs> Actually, there were lots of dreams like that. Puppies, kittens, ponies, unicorns, hamsters, unicorn hamsters. Pretty much anything cute slash awesome and Briar Rose dreamt about it. But Briar Rose's favorite dream was the one with the prince. Ah, the prince. The prince dream always started the same. Briar Rose would wake up bright and early. <sighs> then I would walk into the garden where all the birds and woodland creatures would come out to greet me. Hi, Briar Rose. Briar Rose is here. We love you, Briar Rose. I would do the usual dream stuff, like dance around and sing with the animals. But then, a handsome prince arrives on horseback. He is, of course, smitten with me and declares he is in love with me at first sight. Oh, princess, I'm in love with you at first sight. Marry me, I can't live without you. I hop onto his horse and we fly around. What, 
It's a dream, horses fly in my dream. <laughs> anyway, then he whisks me away to his kingdom and we live happily ever after. <sighs> it's my favorite dream. But it was just that, a dream. Oddly enough, there was a prince from a nearby kingdom who looked a lot like the prince in Briar Rose's dream. His name was Prince John. Prince John and his brother Peter grew up hearing the legend of the sleeping princess and the true love that would save her. Everyone said her castle was somewhere deep in the woods, but no one had been able to find it. No way, I've been all through those woods. That's all just fairy tale stuff. You don't know for sure. It could be true. Yeah, right. Next you're gonna tell me the fairies are real. But remember kids, fairies are real, and they were on the lookout for a prince who might be Briar Rose's one true love. He seems like a nice boy. He doesn't even believe in fairies. No, not that one. The other one. The one who looks all dreamy-eyed whenever anyone mentions the princess. Oh, that one. Yes, he does seem nice. We have to lead him to the castle. Then he'll find Briar Rose, and somehow they'll fall in love. I haven't figured that part out yet. Maybe we could just sprinkle him with some pixie glitter. Did you hear something? Huh? Gazoontite. Could have sworn I heard a tiny sneeze. <laughs> it was probably the fairies. Oh look, he's handsome too. Let's go tell Grand Fairy and Sparkle that we found the perfect prince. Twinkles and Buttercup flew back towards the castle, excited to tell the other good fairies that they had found a prince for Briar Rose. But they were suddenly stopped in their tracks. Hello, Stinkle, Butterpoop. What's up? It's Twinkles! And Buttercup! What are you doing here, Grimsley? You were banned! Yes, but the king and queen who banned me are fast asleep. What are they gonna do? Snore me to death? Well, they're gonna be awake soon because we found a charming young prince to come break the curse. Yeah, we're gonna tell Grand Fairy and Sparkle right now! You are, huh? It'd be a shame if you couldn't do that. What do you mean? What's the matter? Mean Fairy got your tongue? <laughs> okay, have fun with that. See ya! And I will see ya because there is no way I'm going to let you break my curse and spoil all my fun. First, let's check on Briar Rose. Still sleeping. Buttercup and Twinkles thought that they had discovered the perfect match for Briar Rose when they found Prince John. But after Grimsley's curse, they couldn't speak. So how were they gonna tell Grand Fairy and Sparkles? Oh, I love charades! A bird, a plane, Superman? I think they're trying to say that a bird attacked them. Why don't you just write it down? None of us know how to read or write. Oh, right. They don't teach that at fairy school. How about drawing? Can you guys draw out what you're trying to say? Grimsley casting a spell and they can't talk. Oh, Grimsley cursed you and took your voices. But why? Because they fell in love with the prince. Huh? And then Grimsley must have found out and cursed them so they couldn't tell anyone. Now tell us how to find that prince. Buttercup and Twinkles drew out directions on how to get to the prince's castle, and Grand Fairy and Sparkle set out to find him. Let's check on Briar Rose again and see how things are going with her. Still snoozing away. <laughs> Let's see what she's dreaming about. Ah, it's the one about the prince. Really looks like true love, doesn't it? But wait, what's that? The bad fairy Grimsley! Oh no, that's not good. We only want Briar Rose to have sweet dreams. Well, let's get back to the story. When Grand Fairy and Sparkle got to the castle, they scooped it out detective style. Got him! Let's go! Remember, try not to scare him. Got it! Hi! <laughs> oh no! He's out cold. Hey, just like Briar Rose! She's sleeping, he's sleeping. Smash me to heaven. Hello, Prince. Wake up. Oh, Prince. Here, allow me. Hey, wake up. Ah. Don't be scared. We're fairies, and we've come to tell you about your true love. Huh? 
But what the good fairies didn't know, boys and girls, is that they were talking to the wrong prince, Prince Peter. Ugh. The right prince, Prince John, was far away. See, Grimsley had beaten Good Fairy and Sparkle to the castle and captured Prince John. That's right, kids. Grimsley would stop at nothing to foil the Good Fairy's effort to break her spell. Where am I? You're in the Enchanted Kingdom, the land of magic and fairies. And who are you? I'm Grimsley, the greatest fairy of them all. Oh, very impressive. And why am I tied up? Well, I may as well tell you. You are supposed to fall in love with a princess named Briar Rose, a.k.a. Sleeping Beauty. I am? Yes, but she's cursed to sleep for 100 years, and I can't have you going to break the curse. Wait, are you talking about THE Sleeping Beauty? I knew she was real. But wait, why don't you want me to break the curse? I don't want you to break the curse because I'm the one who cursed her. But why did you curse her? Because I'm a bad fairy and that's what I do! Now zip it before I curse you too! Prince John had so many more questions, but he decided he'd better do as Grimsley said and zip it. He soon fell asleep and had a dream, a very sweet dream about a lovely princess. Prince John had fallen asleep and was dreaming of a princess. It was just a dream, but it felt so real. So real that when he woke up, he was very disappointed to find that he was still tied up at Grimsley's. The good news was the bad fairy was nowhere to be seen. Prince John knew that this was his chance. I have to escape. <clears throat> huh, that was easy. Yeah, fun fact, fairies are terrible at tying knots. That's why they never wear shoes with any laces. Once he was untied, Prince John hightailed it out of there, but he quickly found out he had no idea where he was or where he should go. Meanwhile, Briar was still in her deep sleep, dreaming a sweet dream about her prince. Ah, her dashing prince. But then something weird happened. Her prince suddenly changed into someone else. Another prince. But this prince was all wrong. He said, No, I don't think this is true love. Sorry. Huh? That part wasn't a dream. You see, Grand Fairy and Sparkle had brought Prince Peter to see Briar Rose. They thought he would take one look at Briar Rose and realize he was madly in love with her. But he just saw a sleeping princess with a little bit of drool on her cheek. They asked him, So, are you in love? And Prince Peter replied, You guessed it. No, I don't think this is true love. Sorry. Are you sure? Yeah, no. Why did you think we'd be in love anyway? She's cursed into a deep sleep, and only her true love can wake her up. We thought that might be you. Whoa, this is the legendary Sleeping Beauty. My brother is always going on and on and on about her. It's like he's in love with her or something. Wait, hold up. You have a brother? Yeah. That must be who Twinkles and Buttercup saw. Where is he? I don't know. I saw him leaving with some little lady. Hey, come to think of it, she had wings just like you guys. Grimsley! We have to go rescue that prince! Let's go! Okay, I guess I'll just see myself out. The good fairies set off to find Grimsley's hideout, but they wouldn't find Prince John there. He was wandering the enchanted forest trying to get to Sleeping Beauty's castle. It must be around here somewhere. Prince John was determined to find Briar Rose. He trudged through the mud. He swam through alligator-infested waters. He leapt over pits of snakes. Nothing could stop him. That is, until he got to a very large, very tall brick wall covered in vines. Whoa, that is one big wall. Whatever, I'll just climb up the vines. Ow, ow, ooh, ah, ugh, ah. You see, the wall was covered in rose vines and prickly thorns, otherwise known as... <gasps> Briars. That's right, kids. Thorny bushes are also known as briars. Prince John wondered if this might be significant. Hey, briars, roses, briar rose. I bet briar rose is on the other side of this wall. And she was. Only trouble was, Prince John would have to climb over the very ouchy wall of thorny briars. But he was determined. The fate of true love kept him going strong. Ow, ow, ooh. Ouch, ooh, ow. About a hundred owls later, and Prince John was at the top of the wall. <gasps> Is this Sleeping Beauty's castle? Wait, what's that noise? That 
sounds like snoring. This is it. I made it. Woohoo! I'm okay. Time to go break the spell. Looks like we're on our way to a happy ending, kids. But wouldn't you know it, trouble was a brewing in another part of the enchanted forest. Grand Fairy and Sparkle had just made it to Grimsley's hideout and found a very angry Grimsley. And kids, when fairies get angry, watch out. You, you did this. Did what? Released my prisoner. Oh, you mean Briar Rose is one true love. We did it. It looks like he's on his way to break the spell, doesn't it? Not if I get there first. And Grimsley shot out like a cannon. What do you think she's gonna do? I don't know, but we better stop her. Oh, uh, not again. The good fairies knew that they had to stop Grimsley. It was a race against time, good versus evil, but love must prevail. Prince John had just made it to the sleeping castle. Now, let's go save the princess. Prince John wandered the castle looking for Briar Rose's room, which as it turns out, wasn't too difficult. Well, that was easy. <laughs> All right. Prince John opened the door. You might imagine something like this happened next. My prince, my one true love. Marry me. But what really happened is this. Uh, hey, Briar Rose. Um, I think I'm supposed to wake you up. I mean, I don't mean to sound presumptuous or anything, but I might be your true love. It's destiny or something. Um, I guess I'll wait here until you wake up. I'm sorry. This is really awkward. I'm just going to wait outside. Woo! I'm okay! <gasps> what was that? Sorry. Uh, I just fell. <laughs> Briar Rose! You're awake! Who are... <gasps> you're my prince! From the dreams! Huh? You dreamed of me? Yeah. Wait. Am I awake or is this another dream? Oh, please, please, pretty, please tell me I'm really awake. You're really awake. And she was. Sleeping Beauty was no longer sleeping. Her true love had awakened her by being clumsy and noisy. How romantic. Woohoo! <laughs> Wait, what year is it? How long was I out for? Did you hear me snoring? Oh gosh, do I have drool on my face? Please tell me I don't have drool on my face. All good. Thank goodness. <laughs> so, you broke the spell, huh? <laughs> yes, I'm apparently your one true love. I mean, if it's okay with you. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I already know everything about you. This is so weird, <laughs> but cool. But just as the two lovebirds were getting to know each other, they heard a very odd noise. What is that? It sounds like an airplane. Okay, but what is that? Oh, <laughs> I, I guess those were invented after you were cursed. It's a thing you can fly around in. Oh, what? Cool. Wait, how long was I asleep? Like, almost a full hundred years. So I'm really, like, over a hundred years old? <laughs> Is my hair gray? No, it's brown. Um, <laughs> I think we should be more focused on that noise, because it sounds like it's coming right this way. I'm okay. Oh, hello, Briar Rose. You're up. Who are you? It's the bad fairy. We have to run. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, my legs are asleep. I can't move. I am Grimsley, the greatest fairy of evil, and I curse you. But before she could finish her curse, Briar Rose said, Pull me out of here! <sighs> hey, where'd they go? Once they got out of the castle, Briar Rose tried to wake up the rest of her body. Better? Yeah, I think so. Okay, good. Because <laughs> it's time to run! Where are we going to go? I don't know. But wherever they ran, Grimsley was going to follow. And she was working up her worst curse yet. Briar Rose and Prince John were on the run from the bad fairy Grimsley. Only problem was they didn't know where to go. So they kind of just ran around freaking out. <sighs> Meanwhile, since the 100 years of sleeping spell had been broken, the rest of the castle was waking up. We're awake. Hurrah! But the hurrahs stopped when they found that Briar Rose was not in her room. Where's the princess? <gasps> the princess is missing. That's when, rather conveniently, the good fairies arrived. Grand Fairy and Sparkle were exhausted from flying all over, trying to undo Grimsley's mischief. 
but they had a job to do, and good fairies never give up. So we have some good news and some bad news. Good news is the spell has been broken. Yay! But the bad news... What are they doing? Oh, Grims and Kirsten took their voices. They're trying to tell you the bad news. Which is that Grimsley is planning another curse. And we're not sure what she's going to do. But it's probably very, very, very bad. Oh, no. She must have taken Briar Rose. Don't worry. We'll find her. Let's go, gang. Back in the forest, Briar Rose and Prince John had found what they thought was a great hiding spot. Let's just hang out here for a bit and maybe Grimsley will just give up and leave. But that proved to be wishful thinking because guess who showed up? Hey guys, what's up? Are we playing hide and seek? Grimsley! <laughs> yep, Grimsley had found them. Not good. Hmm, let's see. What sort of evil spell should I cast? I could turn you into frog. That's always fun. Oh, or how about I turn Briar Rose into a frog and Prince John into a fly? And then Briar the Frog will eat John the Fly. <laughs> what do you say? Uh, no thanks. Oh, I could turn you into donkeys. Have people, have horse, maybe turn you into statues. Oh, I know. I won't turn you into anything at all. You won't? No, I'll turn myself into... A dragon? What are we going to do? Uh, I don't know. Run? Okay, maybe not. Fortunately, help was on the way. The good fairies were flying at top speed on the hunt for Grimsley, ready to stop her in her evil tracks. Uh-oh. Uh, what's our plan again? Find Grimsley and trap her in this bag. Yeah, I think we'll need a bigger bag. I have an idea! Follow me! The good fairies flew right at Grimsley's face. You know, the one that was breathing fire at everyone? Usually not a good idea, but... Pixie Glitter, now! Hey! Get out of here! I can't see! Ow! I burned myself! Well, maybe you should stop breathing fire! Never! Ow! Give it up, Grimsley! Yeah, Prince John and Briar Rose have true love. They broke the spell. Yeah, love wins. This was like a poison to Grimsley. Bad fairies do not like love. Ugh, gross. Don't invite me to the wedding. Don't worry, you're not going anywhere. Except fairy jail. Is that a thing? We'll figure it out. The important thing was that the day was saved. Grimsley was defeated and forced to undo all her evil spells. Twinkles and Buttercup got their voices back and the Enchanted Kingdom was awake and happy. Normally, we'd say that this was a happy ending, but since Briar Rose and John only just met, let's call this one a happy beginning. Hey, Miss Booksy, we're so excited for our trip. Yeah, is it okay if I bring my coloring book for the bus ride? Of course, Joy. Now, does everyone have their permission slip signed? Yeah. yeah! Here's mine. My mom said to have fun. Okay, okay, kids. If you're ready for the best trip ever, say yeah! Yeah! yeah. If you're excited to see new places and learn new things, say yeah! yeah. Yes! If you already went potty before this, say yeah! Yeah! Ooh, oops, <laughs> never mind. Well, I don't want to stop the bus for breath and breaks. Let's go! But the school bus was not just any ordinary yellow school bus. Check this out. Wow, Whoa. so awesome. Everyone hop onto the story time bus. So where are we going, Miss Booksy? Well, if you're with me, you know it's someplace magical. The bus ride was really fun. They sang songs. Old McDonald had a cow. E-I-E-I-O. With a moo moo here. And, and a moo moo there. there. Here a moo. There, there a moo. Everywhere a moo moo. They played guessing games. I spy with my little eyes something blue. I love blue. Well, green too. And yellow. Hmm, red is also great. Did you spy the sky? Yes. They asked Miss Booksy a million questions. Miss Booksy, how tall are you? Miss Booksy, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Miss Booksy, do you like llamas? I love llamas. Miss Booksy, what's your favorite color? Oh my. They even took a little nap. 
but suddenly, everyone was abruptly awoken. Whoa! Kids! Hold on! Maybe I could draw you an emergency break. No, Drew. It's not safe to get out of your seat. But the bus didn't stop shaking and spinning. Whoa! 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 My belly feels all spinny. Oh, man! Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man! This is crazy and a little bit fun, but mostly crazy. Hold on, boys and girls! Is that a cow? Hi, Mr. Cow. What's happening? I'm seeing stars. I'm seeing every color of the rainbow in front of me. I'm, I'm... I'm me, but I feel different. You look a little different, Miss Booksy, but I can't put my finger on it. Yeah, like a little more colorful for sure. <laughs> Is everyone okay? Good Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Good Are we there yet? Let's go see what's going on. Whoa, you guys, this place looks familiar. I feel like I've been here before. Been where before? Oh, hello. Um, you. Me? But you. Do I know you? I don't think so, but it feels like I'm looking in a mirror. Um, hello, guys? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi, kids. Are you lost? You could say that. We were going on a class trip, but our bus took a topsy-turvy, wacky, willy turn, and here we are. Well, I'm Snow White. I was just about to make an apple pie for my little buddies. I seriously love pie. Would you guys want to help? <laughs> but we don't want to impose. Not at all. Let's go to my cottage. Yay! Yay! Wow, you certainly have a lot of treats here. Are you feeding an army? Sorta. I live with seven little dudes. They're my friends. Friends are just the best, aren't they? For sure. Oh, oh, Robbie, be careful. You might... Spill. Robbie. Oh, Sorry, Snow White. That's okay. When you make a mess, it's no big deal. You just have to clean up. Let's all pitch in. Yay! Yay! Clean, clean, up, clean up, clean up, clean up. Let's all clean the stuff. Well, this has been so much fun, Snow White, but we really need to get back on our bus. Maybe next time we can meet your friends. For sure. Here, take some doggy bags for the road. See you someday soon, guys. Thanks again. All right, kids, let's go. Oh, boy. Here we go again. Whoa, you guys. Here we go again! Spinning round and round we go! Where we end up, nobody knows! Ah! Kids, we're underwater! Hold your breath! Wait a minute! We can breathe underwater? Cool! My dream of becoming a mermaid is coming true! Did someone say mermaid? Are you a real mermaid? And can someone tell me how we're talking and breathing underwater? The answer to most questions down here is magic. Well, I love magic. Well, Ms. Mermaid, Little Mermaid is fine. Well, Little Mermaid, we were going on a class trip, but we we're on a little detour. So now we mostly just want to find our way home. I can probably help with that. But first, my friend Dolph and I were having a synchronized swimming contest. Anyone interested? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, with my mighty penultimate, I will draw a special trophy for the winner. Uh-oh, wait a second. Maybe your pen doesn't work underwater. Oh, man. That's okay. Let's go. So just do whatever the music makes you feel. Here, I'll show you my dance. Woo! Yay! Yay! Ooh, I got the moves. Watch this. Yeah, Joy. Okay, my turn. Let me show you kids how it's done. Wow! wow. Cool. Look out below! Woo. Where'd he go? Guys! Oh, hello there, young boy. Uh-oh, it's the sea witch. We gotta go help Drew. Aha! More victims. <laughs> I mean, new friends. 
We are not friends, Sea Witch. You totally stole my voice that one time. Like, talk to the hand. That's right. I am a big ol' meanie. And this little dude's voice sounds pretty good if you ask me. I think I'll take it for myself. What? Yep. Can you sing? Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Ew, ick. Never mind. Don't sing. You let him go, you stinker. Never. Everyone swim as fast as you can. Come back here, you thief. Yeah, you stole our friend. Bring him back. No way. This is my chance to have my youth. If I have this kid's voice, everyone will think I'm young again. <laughs> she's getting away. She's too fast. You think she's fast? Watch this. Dolph, you know what to do. Gotcha. <laughs> now I'm going to have to put up with your terrible singing if I want that voice of yours. If you don't like it that much, then why do you even want my voice? I told you, I want to have eternal youth. And your voice is very youthful. I'll save you, Drew. Ah, shh, be quiet. Huh? What in the world? I just saw them. Where did they go? Don't say anything or I'll be forced to take your voice right now. Why are we whispering? Yeah, why are we whispering? Ah, stand back, you. Uh, I can't actually stand. I have fins, remember? Don't sass me, you, you mammal. hi -ya. Quick, hop on! Whoa, whoa, whoa! This is crazy! We're faster than lightning! I promise, guys, Dolph will save Drew. I hope so. We're really going to need to get back home soon. You did it! You saved the day! That's what I'm here for! Yay! Yay. Dolph, Dolph, Dolph! We are so done with that pesky sea witch. That's what you think. Ha <laughs> ha So you think you could get rid of me that easy? We weren't trying to get rid of you. We just wanted our friend back. But I'll never leave you alone. Like a barnacle on a ship's bottom. Wa ha 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 ha. You're being a little clingy. Mwah? Clingy? Never. Then why won't you leave us alone? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. Well, the truth is... Yes, we're waiting. Um, I am actually pretty lonely down here. And I feel really insecure, because everyone says I'm a scary witch. Do I really look that bad? No, not that scary. Just a little. Your look just lacks a bit of color. <laughs> just a little outdated. But we can help with that. Yeah, makeover, makeover. Oh, I don't know. Yes, it'll be great. Okay, well, if you say so. So the whole group helped beautify the sea witch. Ella did her hair. Robbie did her nails. Sorry, kid. It's been a while since I've had a pedicure. Er, that's okay. Ugh. Er. Joy did her makeup. Ooh, this color is perfect for your lips. I look ravishing. The Little Mermaid helped her with her clothes. Ooh, I love it. Work it. Go, girl. Yeah. I was born for the spotlight. Even Dolph gave the Sea Witch some lessons on how to swim with more grace and elegance. Now just flow like this. One, two, three, two, two, three. Whoa, I am so poised. Finally, it was the moment for the big reveal. I'm coming out. Yeah! How do I look? <gasps> wow! You look great. You look like you, but even better. You don't even look too different, just confident. I feel confident. In fact, I feel so good that I'm going out on the town tonight. See ya. Wow, how easily she forgets those who helped her. That's okay, because now's our chance to get back to the bus and head home. Aw, I hate to see you go. This has been so special. Well, maybe we can come back soon. I want Dolph to teach me how to swim super fast. No problem. So everyone got back onto the bus again. Thanks for coming under the sea. All right, well, at this point, I know what to expect. Everyone, hold on to your seats. We're about to go for another spinny ride. <laughs> um, uh, no big deal. Probably just a bit of water logged on the engine. Oh, no! Let's try that again. Uh, 
uh-oh. Let's see what's going on. Everyone piled off the bus again. Oh, I wasn't expecting to see you back so soon. It feels like you were here just a minute ago. It was only a minute ago. Our bus stalled. I don't suppose you have an ocean mechanic. We do. Yay! Yay! Cool. But he's on a three-month cruise to Scandinavia. Aww. Aww. But my dad is really handy. Maybe he can help. Sounds great. So the whole group swam in the direction of the Little Mermaid's kingdom. They sang songs while they swam to pass the time. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. And sang... The itty bitty spider climbed up the water spout. And sang... Old MacDonald had a farm E-I-E-I-O. Hey guys, we're here! Yay! Well, what do we have here? Hey Dad, what's up? Me and Dolph made some new friends, and they were on a class trip, but then we did some swimming, and it was cool, but we lost Drew. He's one of the new friends. And of course, that darn sea witch got him, and we went through this whole trying to get him back thing, but we gave her a makeover, and she's out on the town, and the kids in Miss Booksy went back on the bus, but wouldn't you believe it, it stalled. And I said there was a mechanic, but you know, <gasps> Scandinavia. Um. So? So what? So can you help? What did you think that whole story was about? Honestly, I lost you at, hey dad, what's up? Well, anyways, their buses broke down. Can you fix it? So the little mermaid went into a whole description of the day and explained every detail. But finally, she asked a big question. So what do you think? Can you help? Oh, you should have said that in the first place. Um, your highness, uh, your royalness, sir? Usually I can draw magical things with my penultimate and wouldn't have been able to help in this situation. We certainly love magic down here. But just like the bus, my pen seems to be malfunctioning. Don't worry, little dude. I know just the thing. Follow me. Um, I'm a little nervous in the dark. Don't worry, other little dude. Robbie. Everyone grab the hand of a buddy. Watch this! Ah! Giant bioluminescent green worms! So, like, what can we do for you? I need a royal favor. The Sea King explained the whole story to the bioluminescent green worms, and he also explained his idea. So I'm thinking... Yeah? We use your electric current. Ooh! Do you really think this will work? We're giving it all we got! Come on! Just a little more! It sounds like the engine is rubbing! Come on! <laughs> Yay! 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 I knew you could do it! Why, thanks, Your Majesty! For your dedicated service, I would like to award you a royal title. You shall be knights! Kneel down. I dub thee commanders of the most excellent order of the sea. <laughs> Thank you so much. Congratulations. 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 So, Miss Booksy and kids, I'm not sure if you know this, but when someone in our kingdom gets knighted, we have a super big ice cream sundae making party to celebrate. We'd be honored if you joined. Come, come, please say you'll come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 As our first order of business as knights, we shall protect your bus while you party. You can count on us. So the entire group went to the Little Mermaid's castle for a party. And when I say party, I mean party. There were bounce houses. Ooh, wee, wee. This is awesome. Watch this. Watch this. There were guys making balloon animals. Step right up, step right up. What can I make for you? Um, a heart? I'm gonna give it to my mom. Ooh, sorry, I can only do balloon puppies. Um, okay. There was a giant piano that everyone jumped on to make music. Cool, I'm such a good musician. Twinkle, twinkle, little wow. Oops. Yay, nice landing. That was great, Robbie. There were mermaids doing face paint on the guests. Do you want a fairy princess face? 
Um, how about a tiger? Well, an army guy? Actually, I was just gonna ask where the bathroom is. Oh, that way. And of course, there was the biggest ice cream sundae bar ever. Uh, I want rainbow sherbet and like a billion sprinkles. Is there strawberry ice cream with strawberry topping and strawberry syrup? There sure is. Oh, well, my favorite is mint chip. Um, okay. Everyone was having a blast dancing and eating treats, but the clock struck seven, and so... All right, kids, we gotta go. Say your thank yous and goodbyes and be on the bus in five minutes. Goodbye. Bye. See you later. Adios. Bye. See ya. <laughs> Whoa, I feel myself again. I mean, I've always been here, but now I really am here. Whoa, Miss Booksy, that was deep. This trip was so cool. I can't wait for our next magical trip. <laughs>